get ready to set it up. And you were talking about the arcade cabinets. Uh, something we definitely take for granted is, uh, like, we have to wait for the coin to go through. Like, usually I'm just trying to press start on the machine. It's like, come on, bro, instant rematch. Let's go. I'm, I'm tired of waiting. But uh, I think it adds a little, like, uh, suspense to the game. You still have the arcades where we put the coin slots in there? Where, where you guys... Oh, lucky you, man. Yeah. Um, my arcade, I, I love it to death. Arcade Odyssey. They, they, they just switched from coins to cards. They were the last ones, so now we're swiping the cards instead of putting our coins on the uh, corner of the screens like we used to. Uh, fun fact, I, I got started with uh, Third Strike back in 1999. I used to play it um, when I was a DDR player. Mm. All the way to be, yeah, so, um, you know, I would just play this just to cool off white boys some sweat. So, we got Akuma versus Chun Li, Crimson over with the um, with the white jade. That's what I call the outfit. Push yeah. your noobs to the corner. So this is going to be a pretty simple uh, setup for how they want to play. Or are, are they button testing? Yeah, I don't know in the moment if I've just seen a lot of sweep. Uh, Crimson uh, I, yeah, looked like I he was trying to go for um, low forward SA two. You see, yeah, I can tell because when you see someone hit a low medium kick and then their head shakes. <laughs> That's how you know. Okay, okay, okay. So this is actually happening. So, real quickly, Chun Li, the master of the neutral, the master of the buttons, master of standing fears, uh, and Akuma, a character that is not really looking to let you play, but is such emphasizes the term glass cannon. Yes, agreed. And exactly as you mentioned, he either has to make this a one player game, or it's going to be an uphill climb for him. And that's what the Akuma is. And he starts off. With the flying scoop off the demon flip, you got to respect that. Ah, Crimson, he was looking. You see, he was looking for that confirm early there, and he was looking like so. It looked like he went with an all or nothing try to confirm. Try to get that there, missing. Hey, you know, it's a little early in the morning, so take some time. Gets a jump cancel off the close standing round ass kick. Now, you can do that to be safe from parrying. So, people, that's a five frame button, so people try to parry it. You can jump out of the way. So, obviously, low forward going to be a very important button for both players. Uh, leads to all oh, in pass. reaction yes, to the does. fireball. Going to get the follow-up. What's the mix-up? Went low and gets sweeped in return. Anubis can still take this, but Crimson again. you got to respect that neutral. See, so either way, whether or not you get that confirmed into that SA2, it's still a very good poke. Still has some excellent frame data and low profiles. A lot of stuff that, in theory, you would think would get hit. So it's a very sneaky button there, regardless if you can confirm to the SA2, but it works out in Crimson's favor. Oh, hold on. We have a treat. We have a Q? treat. Q? Q? Yeah, the people want to see it. All oh, right. Already, already starting, starting with the taunt. Oh, <laughs> another taunt. One more taunt will give him full max health and the most health in the game. Um, so this character, obviously, besides the health mechanic, access to command grabs that lead to full combos. Uh, pretty insane. Most people won't let you get it, but... Uh, yeah, you got to have good neutral. There, Crimson gets it started. Low forward to the SA2. That's a bread and butter combo. Gets two extra hits in the air. and going to get those lightning legs. I love the lightning legs, especially meaty, because it's so difficult to parry. And it's like, you can sneak away with some chip kills with that as well. That's some of the stuff I've been doing down in Miami. Oh, try to go for a command grab. Not going to find it and actually landed a sweep. Easily one of the worst sweeps I've ever seen. But it's still cool. That oh, wake up wake level up super, though. Crimson got his little bit of a shrug there, but he's still got a life lead. Going to jump across from full screen. Oh, oh, the overhead, overhead into Anubis. the low. Who does the overhead? I haven't seen that in quite a while. <laughs> yeah, that shook off one of the hair buns on Chun's head there. Got to watch the dome. Oh, Perry Super SA2. It's connecting for Crimson, and that's going to be bad news. Yeah, and here we go. Okay, finally getting taunts. Uh, wasn't able to do it previously, so maybe a little too late now for it to be much of a factor. Oh, another wake-up super. Two. That's it. And the overhead again. Oh, that one parry. Yeah, that one gets into the mix-up. Crimson just lets it rip and says, hey. We're going to spend some meter. I'll spend some meter, too. You want to jump? Let's go. I thought that was a... I thought he was going to block that, to be honest. Oh, okay, here we go. Getting another dash punch. I do like the fact that Crimson is committed to throwing these dash punches until he has a reason not to. Like, Anubis is not... Uh, I mean, uh, Crimson has not been ready for... Uh, oh! Ooh, never mind! Too. Extra spicy, Crimson. I'm very unfamiliar with your game. 
And more parrying. Oh, trying to get that big damage with the close standing roundhouse. Anubis again just lets it rip. Crimson's trying to, you know, he's trying to get on someone's mixtape here with some of those parries. I appreciate uh, it. I like gonna it. Gonna get hit there. Does it kill? Going low. I thought he'd maybe go for the tick throw. Tries to go for the overhead dash punch, but um, Crimson will take it. Eventually, Crimson was just able to recognize which hand was in the cookie jar, at which direction. I mean, Anubis was able to connect on a repeat of those decisions with the wake-up super, as well as connecting with that overhead from the dash straight. But it looked like he just stuck to his guns a little too much, a little too egregious. And in the end, Crimson was able to get his confirms working, and that's a good sign. When you can get it working in the first few rounds, you know it's going to come through with the second and third. You're going to be more consistent with it. So solid 2-0 with the Crimson. Very good neutral play, and we look forward to seeing more of them along the way. Absolutely. Uh, very good first way to wake things up. I appreciate your shirt, by the way. I really like it. And it's uh, got some anachronisms, though, because like Rob Van Dam was not part of the Attitude Era. He was like post invasion. Yeah, yeah like so. uh, maybe like 2001, 2002. And you got 2060 Generation X, and you've got like voice modifier Kane. So it's. <laughs> I'm a mark, you know. I like to keep things. Oh, accurate. I, I, am too. Yeah. I, I, I am quite the same way about wrestling. Uh, oh, here's the matchup. Right. So this is the homie on the left. This is Typhoid, uh, and he's a big Akuma stan, uh, looking for that in Street Fighter Six as well. But obviously, playing the character here in Third Strike. And I don't know who the other opponent is. I do love the character in Third Strike, by the way. I think Akuma's really fun to use, the demon flip setups. I play a lot with uh, my good friend, Mr. Prom Granted X. Um, probably the best Akuma. I mean, I would say maybe the best Akuma player in Florida. We Ooh. got some We got some very solid. Wow, solid he's Hopefully going Aegis Reflector. He doesn't want to use Temporal Thunder? <laughs> <laughs> Temporal Thunder, okay. I mean, like, back in Street Fighter V, which I hate mentioning, um, we we had a guy who thought uh, Kuma uh, who liked Urian's V Trigger two more than V Trigger one. Uh, uh, we tried to talk to him about that, and uh, yeah, there's no getting into his. Head. All right, can he tech? Okay, he didn't tech roll, but maybe because he doesn't feel he has to right now. Very important for certain uh, Urian mix-ups. Uh, jumps in immediately, and I honestly think, like, a lot of people will tell you, Akuma Urian is very rough for Urian if he gets knocked down. That teleports out of there. Just gets out of dodge, catches him on the landing there, and now he's got the corner. Let's oh, demon wipe slide, but gonna get grabbed. Does it go? Uh, doesn't have meter, but spends the DP. I like the initiative. You see, he rushes in there. He saw that Yuri, that G did not pick up the level one there, so saw there's no risk of being there. And the demon dive kick. Wow, how it edges through that metallic sphere. I mean, the man is like. It's like he stuck that between two marbles there. Brilliant. Absolutely. And uh, a, a couple of buttons for Urien that are going to be important. Crouching medium kick. It's not cancelable, but it is a move that will get Akuma to stop kind of pacing back and forth. Throwing the fire red fireball and getting the taunt off. Oh, he taunted. He's flexing on him. He's got the full demon. I mean, I don't think we're going to see a Shun Goku Satsu in sight. The meter's not building up yet. Z got some momentum with the with the Batista bomb. Pushing him back. Oh, catching him with the jumping up. Oh, going to punish right the up, sweep. Brother. Hold on. Is this going to hit? It does Below it. Below the radar. Oh, oh. I know Zia wants that back. That was one crouching fierce away from taking the round. Agreed. I mean, it definitely looked like Zeus Floyd missing the super air fireball there. He looked like he was in a world of hurt. You could see he had this uh, reaction on there like he just dodged a bullet there. So taking it 1-0. Let's see how Z responds to it. Also, good blocking against the uh, the Aegis Reflector. Want to see more of that action there. Maybe set up some unblockables, which can make this matchup harder. Build that stun gauge for Akuma. And then being able to read where he's trying to teleport out and escape. Those are some tips that can help Yurian in this matchup. It most definitely. And one of the things that people like to do with Yurian is set up a couple of like parry traps. Like uh, whenever you cast them blocking with uh, Crouching Fears, they literally go for a low. You can low parry right after usually. Right. And it's definitely gotten me a number of times. So Akuma, Seuss Void, going to need to use Tatsu heavily. Not committing to it yet though. Yeah, we saw that earlier, like, there was a situation where he got the first hit of the top two blocked, and then the second and third hit uh, affect you. That's where the player just gets a little too greedy. This time confirms into the Aegis Reflector. It's going to be, uh, yeah. Confirms oh. into the Aegis Reflector, but Akuma's able to teleport out. Seuss Boy got a little bit of life. Oh! Oh, no! my God! 
You know what? He got too grabby. I will. I respect the fact that he went for it. I was. I was ready to call it too. And he was gonna get the symbol on the back there. Might as well stood in the way of, pro of the projector like Tokido. Yes, with, sir. With that drink quest. Not Tokido. Okay. <laughs> All right, tries to go for the dive kick. Uh, gonna be put into a really tough spot, and Zia not spending the reflector yet. And this is something that I definitely do disagree with. Like, you have to spend your meter when you have a position, because it's not guaranteed if you don't have another round. Of course, I mean, some people try to be Yuri and not relying on the Aegis reflector, but it's just like you're missing that extra gear. Like, you're missing that special sauce. You got some guaranteed stuff, punishes that can come out, trades with fireballs, resets. I mean, you name it, it's a fun house. Yeah, most definitely. Um, and, and when you talked about the Aegis like, being a part of it, not wanting to use it, if you're not using Aegis with, with Yurian, you might as well play a worse version of Alex. Yeah, <laughs> I see you trying to recruit people to Team yeah. Alejandro. I like yeah, that. Yeah. I like okay. that. But Zeke gets one back on the board. This time, a few reflectors, too many. He's going to put Akuma through the, put Zeus Void's Akuma through a house of mirrors and then reflect it back on it with the score 1-1. One, one. All right, and here we... Oh, no! Oh, he's going pure. Played Ryu! He's going to show to this one. Hold on. It's okay. If you can low forward, you can play this character. Or maybe maybe he picked the wrong person there. Cause... Yeah, okay. I think he's just going to kill him yeah, off. Yeah, I mean, you can't wear an Akuma jacket and then suddenly... No. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I think he's going to kill him off. Yeah, so he picked the wrong character. They're going to stick back to his match. Hey, 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 listen. I like this matchup. I, 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 yeah, for Ryu, it's, uh, you, you get one hit and, like, Akuma just explodes. Yep, especially if you can get that donkey kick in there, the way it builds up that gauge. And with the Super Art 1, you've got a whole plethora of EX moves, and Akuma's like, what's an EX move? I don't know. He, he doesn't get those until Street Fighter 4. Yeah, and actually, the fun funny part about that is that, like, a re some reuse in this matchup actually like to go for uh, Super Art 2. They are very like, I touch you once, you are going to die. Oh, yeah, like, I am not trying to let you play. Like, but, I mean, even going my back days to my uh, DDR championship days, when my friends hit me with uh, Ryu SA2, there's the Shin Shuriken. I mean, that's the kind of thing where they would send you gifts about that super as well the next day because it does that mental damage. It sets a message. And like I mentioned, with the glass cannon with the Kuma, I mean, you're going to turn him from glass cannon to Mr. Glass. Yeah, uh, yeah, the, the, the cannon is gone. <laughs> the cannon All is right. gone. He's just left shaking Bruce Willis's hand. Here we go. Game three. Couldn't ask for much more. And starting off with the fireball game, Susfoy not really trying to rush things right now. Goes with a Tatsu. Demon flip into the palm. Going to have plus frames. Yeah, not, not going, staying conservative with the demon flip options. Oh, there he was with the shimmy low forward into Tatsu. Connects there. Even if he gets out of the corner there, hurricane season's still happening. And he's in the eye of the storm. Oh, oh yeah, this it. is uh, this is not Street Fighter Six. Some level ones have no invincibility like that. What a parry. Oh, he cut both hits. Let's see Chariot into the Aegis. This one reflects. Uh -oh. Gets a juggle. Uh -oh. Besides uh -oh. oh, oh, oh no! Now. This is a lot of trouble here. Thankfully, didn't have another bar. But Seussfoy will get the low into the Tatsu. After two lows, exactly. Didn't come from the first medium kick. The second one in tow connects. And he's jumping back with the air fireballs. A little social distancing going on here. Needs to back it up, but he's going to kick back. Sticks a meter. Seussfoy here on match point. I don't actually disagree with the use of that meter there to get some space because he's guaranteed at least two rounds. So, like, you know, use your meter when you can. All right, Tatsu oh, to the that corner was the, for a that combo. Was in the Hulk Hogan Thunder Blender. Oh, Demon Flip Throw. Big Duck City. And these Tatsus are safe for days. Yurian's just putting up the hurricane shutters, but he's not exactly stopping the storm. And the storm continues as Seuss Point presses on. Hey, nice. flexing the symbol. You saw that? He's like, hey, check out my jacket. And the replay here. You know he wishes he had that demon there. Yeah. Oh, oh my god. There. I mean, Z had other options could have used. Maybe Crouching Fierce. Maybe something would have just got one more hit there. But Seuss Floyd was able to survive that storm. Yeah. Now, I know we're probably going to see down the road Seuss Floyd trying a little bit more of that jab, jab, torch, short, fierce <laughs> magic. But... You know, he's gotta, you gotta have some real setups. Maybe put some car in there, get the opponent looking the other way. Because, hey, this is Texas Showdown, okay? We do not casually Masatsu Child.
Uh, you're not wrong. And, like, here, I thought for sure that, like, this was, like, the proper way that Zio was going to just take the round. But, hey, uh, sometimes just pushing buttons works. And perhaps those two, those one or two parries in the beginning of that sequence of the Aegis may have been able to neglect to neglect some other potential damage and stun. But it was the close rounds on both sides, just being able to win that scramble and come together. So props to Zeus Floyd with the 2-1 victory there. And we're going to be queuing up the next match for you. Oh, they already started? They already oh, started. big nasty with the Hugo. I wanted to talk about this. I guess we're going to do it right now. Thus, SPD! Yeah, Belly flopping him with the chain directly into the ground. Big Nasty making his presence known with about a power bombing presence as Kevin Nash. Or was that just a kill off, or what are we. Was that a point? Yeah, that was a point. Wow. Wow. Hey, Nasty, okay. got it quick, huh? Going Gigas Breaker. Yeah, the standing 720 is still one of the most difficult and impressive things you can do in this game. Truly, we've seen it before. I mean, we've seen some great play from Hugo as well. I know, um, yeah, there's some other Hugos in this bracket. Very excited about. Let's see where this goes. Got the last going. Yeah, you cannot move there. You're going to have to parry. EX clothesline, the follow-up, but not going to get the punish after the parry. SPG! Man, after that huge Larry and then taking out the throws. Big Nasty here looking like Andre the Giant Shades of WrestleMania 2 against all those NFL players. Oh, oh yeah! Flat. Ugh. Yeah, give this man an applause. Big Nasty is turning babyface out here. Uh, he is so patient. Like, he knows and is ready for the jump-ins. Uh, try went low, was looking for an option with that shimmy. Typhoid doing everything he can. Tatsu! Oh, I think it's gonna yeah, he had to go to the super. He had to. The previous... Uh-oh. Uh, previously, Z was not a... Oh, my God. He was ready. To go from uh, the opponent not punishing the uh, the Tatsu on Z side, I'm um, able to keep that pressure there. You can't do that with Big Nasty in your face. Now, Big Nasty doesn't have the meter just yet. What a demon flip. Big demon flip. Huge. Oh, hold on. All right, all right. Typhoid knows. So just just be lame. Be lame. Don't be dumb. Oh, oh my God. A flip in there. That lets Zeus Oh! The <laughs> Man, I mean, he just didn't look ground. You know, Big Nasty takes a 2-0. That was a really interesting set there. As we uh, we'll watch the replay of basket. another game. <laughs> yeah. This, this again, below the radar. That, that's really what was uh, Seuss Ford's undoing in that last round there. Was a little uh, too much egregiousness with the air fireball. And that patience from... No, but but it's... Yeah, but that patience from, uh, from Big Nasty was just able to just find... Just get those chops to the chest there in the right place. Now, we've all seen how the former Continental Champion, Guther, was able to throw down with that. So we know that causes big damage, especially against Akuma, it doesn't take much. Oh. What's the channel? Oh, Riz One. Huh? Riz One. So next we got my boy from Team Strike First, Tech S Neo. Great player in Street Fighter V, great player in Street Fighter VI. Part of Team Strike First Gaming. My man here going up against Careless. And then coming up next, we got a match you want to see. We got Chosen against Dr. B, Galaxy B, also Welcome from Strike First. So we got some team. Over there on the uh, careless side, you see uh, the leader, of the, the manager of Strike First Gaming. That's Tone. Because he's filming, getting his content out there. That's what it's all about. We just want to see more of these fighting games happening. Are we going to see Ken versus Ryu? Ken Ryu. All right, so... Wait, hold on, hold on, I think, uh, oh, he either plugged it in, or he's actually committed to the Ryu, and he is committed to the Ryu Denjin? No, okay, okay, I thought for sure we were getting level one, uh, good color, I like this color for Ryu, Oh but yeah, check. feels underrated, I mean, oh, it taunts him in the face there, taunts him back, yeah, button check, yeah. Never mind, I got hype. This dude probably pays some lame-o like Chun-Li or something. Hey, that's <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. No, 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 no. But hey, I'm glad you're here with us, joining us for some Third Strike. Um, thank you for putting up with everything. Um, and yeah, like, let's have fun. It, it, this game is lit, and it deserves every bit of attention that it gets. 
Oh, for sure. And the competition there is just another level. I mean, when you see what's going on with some of the top names on the jazzy circuit, the rising stars, um, shout outs over there across in, um, in Japan. You got 17 Americans uh, competing in third strike over there. Some really good ones as well. Um, like Nipper Man and Arla and Thoreau, they're over there holding it down. And we've seen some Americans. Ah, uh, here we go. So the first UN on stream, Gene Chin. Kind of cheating, but that's all right. Hey, you know, these are the two most broken characters aside from mine, and with the most broken supers there. So you see Careless whipping some of those low strongs out there. That's going to build the meter, gets the target combo, and then we're going to see a Canadian very soon. Ah, oh, here we go. That's bad news. He's going coast to coast, shoulder to shoulder, uh, hacky sack. Didn't get the bombs. All so right. So either way, though, like, uh, it's a pretty good idea for him to just kind of uh, wait for a second. Going for the low forward into the dash punch. And, yeah, okay, sweet. Tech's going to have to get Careless to kind of sit down for a second. Yeah, neutral's uh, favoring Careless here. Oh, that was a bad thrust punch. That is going to be minus. Or oh, a parry! What a parry! Oh! oh my <laughs> lord, that was saucy. Let's go! Because what my, what my friend Arleia taught me is that the activation from Ganagin, every button, every normal come out, hits with the priority of a suit. So the guts to have that kind of parry and then the awareness to follow that up and go from Gen A to Gen Rai, that's exactly how Neo was able to steal the first round. All right, and jump in immediately, dive kick into the target combo, and has the meter is gonna spend it here. Yeah, to get your opponent down to 30% life um, on it, when you first activate an agent, that, that's seriously great neutral on Carol's on Carol's behalf. All right, looking and just gonna get the hit there. It's such a and, good poke, man. That down forward fierce. Oh yeah, most definitely. Go for it. Building up meter. Yun almost has the full stick of butter. Dive kick. So definitely something that Careless has de uh, gotten away with is the uh, empty dive kick low, and it's been paying dividends. Do you want to play a game with me? He takes him below to the 40% threshold of his health. Oh, uh, wait, what? Inside. That hit? Yeah, but the Shippu Jinrai Kiyaku never fails at that level 3. He needs a little bit more. Is that going to be able to kill with that with that 3? Neo needs a little bit more on the offense, and that gives Carolus the initiative to get that symbol confirmed with that low forward into the, the jab, the thrust punch. Now, what I like is uh, Careless is winning this game a lot with neutral. Like, the neutral seems to be at his advantage, and he's using that good agent as just the icing on the cake. And that's very strong, but Neo's going to have to find a way to take initiative here, press on, and see if he can get more of those highlights. Because he's putting on highlights. I mean, yeah. he's right now looking like Dominique Wilkins to the Slam Dunk Contest. Oh, but you got to translate that to buckets, to points. Aw, oh, whiffing the sphere Shoryu, not what the, again, yeah, yeah. definitely feel maybe this is an execution error, gonna get the parry, and here we go, Gain Agents fully online, bow, bow, ba ba, boom, doom, doom. I was about to uh, dub in the, uh, that, type sound <laughs> just to add a little bit more, kind of like that Willy Wonka, and that puts Careless on match point here. Again, not relying too much on the Ganagian. Gets that dive kick, carries it in the corner, confirms it. Got him. Let's see more juggles out there. Hey, two hacky sacks. Got a palm. Two more hacky sacks. Another palm. Got the fist. Got it going. Now, what's interesting and curious about this, though, is usually I've seen, like, other young practitioners focus more on using the Ganagian to get more Ganagian after it. But careless with that neutral right there, just throws some in the shoulder, throws it back for the easy 2 out. Yeah, uh, Ganagian obviously messing with our feed. See, look, even as we see it. <laughs> that was beautiful, though, man. That parry against the Ganagian into the Super was fantastic. Now, Neo in that situation there, you notice he careless knew that uh, most a lot of people blocking and defending against the Ganagian, they're okay with just giving up the overhead because he, he, he can't combo off that overhead. He has to continue to loop off of it to try to open up the opponent more in a certain options there. So even if, even if sometimes... You know, you're just looking to play mind games no matter what with Ganagian. And those juggles are just absolutely on point, as well as the variance of those buttons. Oh, did you see Tech's reaction when he was getting juggled by Ganagian? He was bopping his head to it. Watch. Uh, 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 
I don't know, like he, 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 he's like, like making a rhythm. To shout out to the production team and to the people who fixed the machine. We are back. We're looking lean and mean. Let's get things started. Yeah, shout out to the Illuminati for troubleshooting there, doing the technical um, difficulties, getting through there. Also, Anubis, also you saw earlier, he was he uh, provided the cabinet, so he's been fixing the cabinet as well, poking through the curtains, making sure we get back to this matchup. So here we have this matchup here. Oh, good carry there by Careless, calling out. And that's going to be some of the things. He's going to be able to read those options, that low that low wee kick, as well as the clap. He's able to parry, get through there. What a jump. The SPD. Yun, also not exactly the most durable character, can get deleted pretty quickly if he's not careful. Now, here's what I think is really interesting. Oh, he used the meter there for the up kicks. I like the strategy, but more splat. And then baited that good patience there on Big Nasty said. Now, Mr. J, what I want to talk to you here about is um, my issue here is that you see Carol a lot of great young players I see, and Carol has been doing fantastic here. But after he does the Ganagin, he does not have any meter afterward. And I know it's a priority where after the Ganagin, you want to get that meter back as soon as possible because when that meter's been exhausted, Big Nasty's been able to get that momentum and possibly take the round. Oh, and speaking of, look, doesn't get a lot of meter at the end of it. Going to get the back throw. Gets the SPT. Slam it down. Sweep another SPT. Oh, throwing them bows. Well, who cares? We got bigger slams there. Catches Careless. And, yeah, you saw, like, Careless had that amazing good agent combo going coast to coast. And he did it He did it pretty well. But then you could see Big Nasty unfazed by that because he knew that once that meter was weak, it's grabbing time. It's grabbing season. Huh. Right? It was a cuffing season. That's the one. There we go. All right. Back to it. Here we go. Careless definitely going to need to uh, find some kind of adjustment. But Big Nasty, a lot of this is just his knowledge with the game and how long he's been playing it. Certain scenarios will only make sense to Nasty. Uh, I bet this makes a lot of sense, though. Uh, target practice at this point. Oh, that was a good connection there. Very good connection, good conversion there. And you're able to get Big Nasty below the 40% threshold on his HP. Now Big Nasty's got to do things. Uh-oh, here he comes. Ooh, EX. Uh, he's sticking uh, with his guns. EXCP, and he'll take the round. He's like, I don't care how heavy the chains are on those wrists. You are reaching for those cookies, and I will upkick you every time. And, you know, we've seen frequent upkicks on Wake Up happen. Kazunoko won Capcom Cup at Street Fighter 4, um, repeatedly waking oh up Oh, my with God. The Did you see Daigo. that he set up clap and immediately dashed into the SPD attempt? I like the fact that Nasty is enforcing the fact that careless needs to move and look that for that was a frame trap caught careless thinking something else was coming didn't get anything off the low and the sp yeah. slam it down man careless i mean he's really picking it up he's got good momentum his hits are on point there but oh, oh. Two, across, two across the back shades of lex luger and another big splat energy there Man, Careless doesn't ha really has to reach in, clutching those ribs there. He's got to get a good agent there, but he's a mile apart of it, or what seems from it. Needs to connect a little more, but he's got less HP than he's got meter. Bad situation here. Big Nasty going to calmly yeah, walk forward. Yeah, just going to activate it. I think this is smart. Spend it while grab. you have it. Bam, bam. Oh, missed. Good command grab, but now he's got to do that work. He's got to build that gauge again. Oh, nice. Okay, almost uh, a little over halfway, getting there, three-fourths of the way. Oh, no, oh. that's a punish, and that will be it. Big Nasty 2-0. And he got up as soon as he hit that circle there. He knew that butter was churned. Boom, shakalaka for Big Nasty there, drinking his electrolytes as he moves on to the winner's final of the pool. Let's take a look at the replay, Mr. J. All right, yeah, I had to use Ganaging there because, like, he just wanted it to go through. And I thought for sure that this was, like, the best position for him to be in, and it was, but uh, it, it turned it on its head immediately. Big time. And aside from the first Ganagin that Careless did, which was just blocked and, and walked away, all of his Ganagins have been really good. Like, his conversions have been on point, the juggles, the corner carries, just in the right place. But just finding himself in the areas with low meter turned out to be his Achilles heel, which just gave Big Nasty just the green light to just keep going. Not just the green light, but in a Formula One sense, he had the DRS with that big slap and the SPD coming down. 
And here we go, another match, Flow and Chosen going right into it. And this is our first Dudley. I am such a fan of this character. Oh, I love this character Easily yeah. one of the coolest characters in the game and in Street Fighter history. It's cool too, and I also like to see if the opponent can fully uh, parry the machine gun punches, because that's the coolest thing. All right. Cho uh, Chosen setting up their offense, trying to make sure that Flow kind of has to sit down for a lot of this. Oh, EX machine gun, but not going to get punished. Air to air parry, good throw by Chosen. Chosen activates and he's got enough to go coast to coast there. Connects off of the third hit. Let's see the juggle happen. Will it kill? No. But he dive kicks away out of that situation. Oh, oh. the jumping roundhouse and Flow will take round one. Yeah, and even though that jump does have a hurt box that can be hit in anti air, good it's parry. really, you do not want to trade with that business because it hurts a lot. I mean, that was a very painful move as well in Street Fighter 4 which uh, Dudley had really great jump-ins with. Oh, you taunt, I toss. That's what Chosen just said. Oh, man, got knocked all the way back. Going to get hit by the command grabs, getting a setup, and the corner has half a bar ready built and will have Ganage in here now. Yeah, and after nobody closed in on Flo's taunt there, Chosen not afraid to hit below the belt. Command grab after Ganage in there. Going to get a few juggles out there. But see, one thing I like is look at where his meter is now. Three seconds after Ganage in, Four seconds after Ganage, he's got another one on deck. That's what. That that's. And I'm saying this because I've been in the recip. I've been on the receiving end of many Ganages, and I know where there's a time where there's like a recovery period, or there's just like the next. Ah, uh, I thought the command deck. grab was coming, and you're gonna get punished. Bow. Oh yeah, he oh, called the back. Oh my Pierce. goodness! How it hits both sides sends him right back into the corner. Like, nah, you ain't leaving Chinatown just yet, sir. Ah, uh, spending on the rocket uppercut, but oh, goes no. the wrong way. And that's a lot of meter to lose there to not hit that third hit. All right, hold on, careful. All right, avoids the the worst of it. Definitely a super that you got to save up and hit there, but Chosen is hitting ah, all the right spots, ties get it up. Clapped. That was really clean, clean young play as well. And he's just going straight to the cheap tools. He's just going straight to the business. He's just he's not even looking at the life bar. He's just looking at the super gauge. Let's see how Flo responds with it. Now, Flo's been hitting heavy. You know, Flo's been getting the damage, but the failure to convert on that Oh, one wow. Going with one. full palm. I guess predicted that Flo would respect or empty off. Going to get the back throw. Time to guess and gets out pretty quickly. Like, definitely something that Flo has not had a lot of success in is enforcing, but had a chance there, but going to get knocked away and has to deal with Ganejin. Well, let's see this. He's got that old school. Oh, side to side, coast to coast. Oh, Lord. Man, he just blast processed him like it was a Genesis gen. Oh, uh, let's see. This uh, will uh, hurt. Uh, this will kill. Yeah. yeah. And that's why Flo opted to stick with the Super Art 1 even after that failure to after that failure to juggle in the previous match because you saw how it was able to seal the deal and knock right back. And that's changed so similar to the matchup that Dudley has with Ken where he can just hold his own by being just a bigger heavy hitter. All right. Flo. Like, hey, Flo, Flo's made it ride for with, with what he's had. And he, every stray hit is actually a lot worse for Yun just because their health is so low. And so it all really adds up and tried to go for the command grab but ends up whiffing it and is on a really bad situation in the corner, gets out. Yeah, by a sliver of a pixel, just missing his hurt box to get that scoop up. Oh, reversal. Oh, my God. He swung again. That damage is not bad here. He's trying to see if he can steal the round here. Oh, he no. Going to get no. caught with the low. But he escapes. He escapes. Oh, not enough. Chosen. Oh, man. Flo thought he had himself. Had it there when he was able to escape to confirm there. Chosen was able to hit into the Ganage, but not in the range to continue it. But still, Chosen was able to win in the neutral. This is coming down to the last round. Easily the most competitive set we've had. Here comes Chosen. Going to get the launch, but nothing else. And target combo into oh. Gine Jean. Flo will probably have one more chance. Oh, and the reset into the command grab. Oh, after the up kick. So still a little more to go. And shoulders through. Great stuff by Chosen, just like this clockwork, just the sequences, the control, the set play, beautiful stuff. Very good stuff there. Oh, did Big Nasty just tell him to stay on? Oh. Yeah, yeah, Big Nasty's like, hey, you stay on there. You know, I, I want some of that Ganagin too. Oh, yeah, we man, saw the... Big Nasty earlier taking out Careless's um, Ganagin magic as well. So let's see if Chosen can reach in 
Get some of that Michael Jordan secret stuff. The mas the master of dealing with Yun. I love that side switch there. With that down forward fierce how it pushes him back into the side. Sir, you ain't leaving Chinatown yet. Nah. That, that was kind of saucy, can't even lie. I was like, where is this going to end up? And here, Ch Flo was uh, in his own flow, so to speak. But, uh, hey, it's not over for him. Uh, still has an opportunity to move on in the loser's bracket. Wow, big. And especially blocking with that overhead. Blocking that overhead punch from Dudley. That sneak. He did the, kind of the deceptive one that you don't often see coming. So being able to get that parry into... That can agent activation made a big difference there. Let's and see if it makes a big difference against Big Nasty now. Okay, already chosen, picking up right where he left off, dismantling someone bigger than him. Oh. Oh, good parry against the air there. And yeah, winning with the neutral there. There's a good agent with Big Nasty, only a 15% of his health, and the lunge is enough. Man, you see how I get that reach out there? Mm -hmm. Long distance relationships paying off there. Chosen gets another one on the board. Okay, big nasty. Gonna have to, uh, I mean, obviously, get Gonna Chosen to, to sit down by any means necessary. Okay. Good air to air. Chosen wasn't ready for it. Ooh. Threw him out of there. Don't throw the shoulder. You get thrown. Yeah, big nasty here. If he can get that round, he's in a good place, especially with having a full stick of butter in the other one. And he's using the Super R2, the Gigas Breaker. So that's going to be big trouble energy. Oh, oh, nice. Get that out of here. The clap. No, but uh, the Big Nasty getting a round of applause for himself. Oh, oh the air oh. grab. Thanks for coming. Argentinian backbreaker out of the air. Catches him there. You got to love that, especially with the hype that it brings, the big damage. Big Nasty getting one on the board. I mean, how many tricks does he have? Oh, 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 his oh. Gigas is broken. E. A broken Gigas here oh. in Texas Showdown. Nah, oh. you can't get that other one. <laughs> Good parry, but gonna get grabbed. And Chosen it needs to build this bar quickly. Almost there. Ooh. Off the trade. Oh, that, I, was, I was like wondering. I was like, that would have been cool. Oh, no. Big Nasty gonna have one last opportunity. Yeah, the air target combo gets fully blocked by Big Nasty. Big Nasty can take a little bit more health, a little more hurt here. Shows to trying to gain that back up to get to that Canadian. Careful. Oh, oh no, run, Terry. Oh, oh, EXTP. Jonas is like, I can't let that get too hype. I got to mash it out. I got to mash it out. Once he saw that Rojo, Joseph was like, nah, I'm the bull in this ring. Woo. Can't grab me by the horns. You gonna see that red parry? I'm charging you. That was gas. That was. That was almost as fun as like going on YouTube and watching bullfighting videos with the bull wins. Those are the <laughs> best. That's why YouTube was invented in my opinion. <laughs> oh, parry into Ganadian off low forward, but like earlier what we saw, he was not within the range to continue, but that don't matter because he's chosen. And when you're chosen, you send them back to the corner. Set A, man. Chosen's built up another bar here. It's going to have it. Have it. There it is. And now Big Nasty is in an awful situation. Going to have to not only defend, but deal with the onslaught that's coming. Gets the tech. What a parry. And that awareness to just see what options you can do in those scrambles after the parry. Chosen wisely taking the throws. And because he chose wisely, he's now in match point. Yeah, big, big nasty on the absolute last gasp. Cannot give another round. Ganagene fully activated. Went oh. right below. Very smart. Nasty caught looking. Bam. That was brilliant. Gets a 50%. And look at Chosen's meter. Look at that. I hate to sound like a broken record, but Chosen's breaking the records. And you see that. Even if he blocks it all day. Oh, good escape there by Big Nasty though with the splash. Oh, wow. Did you see? He used standing medium kick. That move rarely comes out. Oh, oh my lord. Wow. Gigas broke. Big Nasty, is he going to be revived here like Sean Connery sipping from the chalice in the last crusade? Dive kick again. 
Ouch. Oh, another dive kick. Okay. So, Ganagian's activated. Oh, gets the sweep. That was so, beautiful. all this is important. All this adds up for Big Nasty. Honestly, he came out pretty unscathed. Yeah, that Ganagian was straight up gone because sent him all the way fully to the other side of the screen. He had it about 50%, so his approach was... I mean, it, it's it's a bummer. It's like you're getting close to this special stage, and then you lose all your 50 rings, you know? And it's just, ah, uh, these things happen. Light, ah, uh, overhead. Again, Great basically blocking. escaping from get uh, from Ganagian. Gets the SPD. Trying to go for the empty hop. Not going to get rewarded. And Chosen almost has another Ganagian in his pocket. Yeah, quick to confirm it. And this time it's hitting. He's got the extension. He's got the palms. Two kicks. More hacky sack in action happening. Oh, he will take it. And then Chosen. He, he Impressive just performance. Hitting him with that dive kick like it's a stepping stone. As oh Chosen moves on, he's like, hey, you want to call me back to the machine? Suffer the consequences. Now look at this hype crowd that we got going on there. Look Hope at all those it. polite people. It's too polite, you know? <laughs> I mean, this match should have got a little bit more heated, you know? We got to see two Gigas Breakers. And Chosen just, oh, that Ganagian and the reaching and the teaching and the, ah. Oh. Yeah, this, this that was uh, trick like this, man. definitely a fun matchup to watch. And, uh, man, I, I got to say, Big Nasty doing uh, really good work. That Bargentinian backbreaker had me on some kind of skates. Uh, watching this super never gets old. It, it makes you wish that they could do the Argentinian backbreaker as an anti-air in WWE. That would be like the most... Like an actual anti-air instead of getting hit out of it. Yeah, maybe Braun Strowman could do it if he had more talent. But, you know... <laughs> Oh, we saw that red parry into the clothesline, and Chosen was having none of it. He got to show it's a great option against Hugo when he sees that pressure, gets those up kicks out there, and we saw that that clutch tech of the throw, and then that response, even with the anti-air kick getting parried, he was able to still get the throw, and with match point in tow, goes with the empty low on the Ganagian and makes big, nasty pay, big dividends for that. Ah, uh, yeah, and seeing the replays for winners' finals for this, uh, getting I think that's a dash up Giga Breaker there. Dash up seven twenty. Um, you know, one of the hardest technically, technically, um, moves to perform out there. He was able to connect with that, and then gets that juggle for the end. Doesn't fully get the kill, but has him right at the crosshairs, right where he wants him. Blow. Well, we're gonna get ready here for uh, losers' quarters. Him on the other end, and we got Careless and Shinakuma next, so that's going to be another um, losers match for you. But here we've got Flo um, and Typhoid, and the names are mixed up. Don't worry. Now. Yeah, Seuss Void is the Akuma. Flo is the heavy hitting Dudley. I think this matchup heavily favors Dudley. Yeah, and actually, I'm really excited because I want to see how Typhoid's going to deal with all this. The Tatsu going to be very important, going to get a punish. Wow, gets the overhead and uh, Typhoid doing a good job. Oh, throw the super. Ah, yeah, that's a punish. It really does punish that taunt. That's wild. But we saw Flo trying to fish for that earlier, and he definitely got punished heavily in the last match. In the last match against Chosen. So we'll see where that leads to more. Uh, Got to watch the life lead here. It's very important. What a parry. Good stuff there from Flo. But uh, Typhoid maintaining himself right now. Using Tatsu. Oh, this is going to be big, but mixes himself up. And now we've got spaghetti all over the floor. Yeah, the old which way did he go, George? Can't find the man in the yellow hat. No lesson to be learned there. More Tatsu with the pressure there. We saw Typhoid using that as a tool to get the corner carry, even when blocked, that he was doing against Big, um, that he was doing previously. Ah, uh, going to find the hit, but no confirm. Dudley in a lot of trouble. Is in the corner, went high low. Typhoid. No way. Oh, oh my yes. god! What the kind of read was that? He. And he's looking around, he's like, hey. Did you see what I just did? We see you. We see you. We see you. What? He's gonna pose after the KKZ? He what went kind of degenerate is this. He said on my meaty. Super. Nah, man. What? You gotta, it ain't like that, man. You gotta turn your back with the demon. You got. You can't. You can only turn your back with the Shun Goku yeah. Satsu, not with the KKZ. Come on. Wow. I do like seeing the That's KKZ awesome. though. That was hot. Yeah, that yeah. was. Uh... But it just means that he can't card demon. Oh my <laughs> I'm god. I'm talking trash. <laughs> I am talking trash. Okay. 
Because if it was Mr. Pomegranate, I would have been carried even. I'm kidding. I'm just showing my Florida bias. Okay, so. Well, Typhoid fight back. He's up 1-0 against Flo. You're staring at me. <laughs> <sighs> this is third strike, man. Yeah, it's toxic it is. out here. Yeah, I love third strike. Uh, yeah, I, uh, they're fixing something right now. Um, man, today's been a technical, like... <laughs> Uh, dang. You know what they say, man. Streaming's a blow up. Yeah, it is. It happens. It takes a lot of work. I run a one man show over on my channel, and it's difficult enough to beat Echo the Dolphin on Sega CD. So. But we're just troubleshooting here to get through it. Or maybe uh, Flo wants to pick a different character, because you are allowed to switch characters. Yeah, I mean, he was doing well with his Dudley there. Just that conversion at the end where Typhoon was able to get that momentum. And had him cornered. And missing with the Super Art 1, that's what really damned him there, because. If he can get that super art one, it's gonna do like that Shinshin Yuki damage to a combo. All right, just uh, kill the character off real quick. Maybe even switching supers. Maybe, yeah, that could be something there. The super art one, he is one out of three for it, hitting it. I like the damage that it does, but at the same time, when you pick his other supers, you get more utility there, where you're able to finish more combos out there. And is he going to go with, like, the corkscrew cross, maybe? No, he's eyeing the rocket uppercut. Okay. We're staying the course, folks. I don't know what the change was then in that, but we'll get to that answer. Okay. Flo All right, so here we go. Uh, Flo said there was a stick issue, and, uh, hey, oh, almost punished a teleport, uh, but not did. enough. Yeah, that was a good heads-up play, that awareness to get it. But just the machine gun punch was just too out of focus there to connect on that range. Get the grab, went low, tried to get the grab, it gets the tech, and man, Typhoid picking up right where he left off. The parry! Oh! Oh, oh did you see Typhoid looking at the camera? No, no, no! Uh, after he got parried three times, including once on the low, Flo failing to go the distance there. But hey, maybe that might be the thing that brings out the Raging Bull out there. Maybe well, that could be that talk in the corner that he needs to motivate himself. Ah, uh, now Flo's starting to get mixed. Ends up giving all the space back to Typhoid. Gets the demon flip grab, and Flo's in a lot of trouble. Has not looked good since the hit, but gets the EX machine gun. Ooh. And the tables have been turned uh, right there with that great momentum there. But Flo just continuing going, just connects with those machine gun punches, and that's what really helps me favors Dudley there. He just has to pick a spot to be a little bit more evasive, and then right there, just able to get those big hits. Okay, coming in, gets an air-to-air. -to -air. Tatsu setting up the pressure, doing it again! Yeah, oh my it. god! He said, I know you got gloves on, but I know you're still reaching for it. And then punishes with the full meter there. That, what? Was, that was a great one. Right what there. on earth is Typhoid? He's playing 10 DS! Lord Typhoid will take it! That was good. Flo, good stuff on that end. Had some really close rounds there, but just a few things like that Miss Super Art one, and then not, and then that that godlike parry against the Super he did, where he wasn't. It, where it took about the eighth hit to take him down. That's where it got difficult. That was a bit of his undoing there. Typhoid, great momentum there, and here we saw KKZ one, which decides the first one. Bam! And you can see Flo was reaching. There was some buttons being pressed. He nodded and acknowledged with that, but then that second one. That second one was just degenerate. It was just a problem. Yeah, I'm... Welcome to the world of Street Fighter. Okay, All right. Finals. We saw Crimson earlier. Crimson doing work. He was winning there in the neutral with that low forward. Let's see how his Chun-Li looks. I know he's one of, the, he's one of my favorite Chun-Li players out there. And then we got hometown, fa not really hometown favorite, but from the nearby, the Dallas-Fort Worth area, Wax. So it's kind of like cheering around a Miami player in Orlando. Yeah, it's and uh, obviously with uh, uh, this is going to be actually our last set uh, with us for this stream. So it's been a pleasure to talk and conversate with y'all. But oh my goodness, wax, wax okay. on, wax, wax off. off, Crimson getting doused. Oh, oh, look at that! You're swinging at everywhere. ghosts. There's, it just looked like that blindfold match between Rick Martell and Jake Roberts where they're just reaching out and you got a point and the crowd tells them where to go. Of course, you just be like Triple H, just distract the referee and then pull it up. And, yeah. So, <laughs> oh, great parry. 
That down forward roundhouse kick is not very good in third strike. I know this because I spammed that move, and it sucks. <laughs> but that one oh, got Oh, okay. Crimson said, okay, that's enough. Ooh. I'm going to cook you now. He went low with the Hazanshu there. Loving that what kick. What a stun. That high Big stun energy off that five-frame close-standing roundhouse of death. Enough to get the stun there. Put Crimson on the board. Man, we got some heavy hitting going out there. Get Agent on point. Going up against using the low forward in the right places. We'll see. Good parry. Good throw. Get me out of the corner. Another uh, one. Take it to another side. One. Another one. Yeah, I want. I want your brother to see this one. Tries to go for saying. the taunt, uh, for the shoulder again. Dive kick. St oh, Gary, go. Ganachin. Butter ready to blow up. Oh. Yep. And now what I love is getting five hits post Ganachin combo. That's the beauty right there. And then just a few more of those strongs gets the shoulder charge in there, and we're back in Canadian City. Wow, what? Oh, that that was the first game, first game for Wax there, and he just dips in. He's like, "I'm picking out there. You want to have more dim sum? Bring me another plate of that." Yeehaw, I'm getting more cowboy. of those dumplings. We're in there, tipping his cap, bro. The drip. Yo, I love the jacket. Look at this guy. He's rocking yeah. the gross yeah. sweater, yo. Yep. And uh, my man Wax rocking the cowboy hat. This is obviously. Uh, Two very popular and uh, powerful players. <laughs> yeah, and Crimson just punches him in the mouth there with that stand fierce, but carried back. Wax with the lunge punch after the low forward shoulder. It connects. Will it juggle? Yes, it does. How you like that, brother? A lot better than your Super R3. Bow. Even bop, I like a Super bop. R3. Bop. Oh, yep, went low. Hits. Yep, two hits after the Super there. Oh, wait, 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 wait. What? Did you see that? What was that? He, like, switched. Game? A you lot know, of interesting side, side switches on there. Low profiles that happen. It's just third strike. Also, Crimson mashing that two-frame jab, trying to back out some of the pressure. But that's created some openings for Crimson. Oh, Wax looking for, yeah, going to chip. But did you see Wax's reaction to that? Yeah. He, his eyes almost went out of his head. Now, as Wax is on match point here to get out of pools, Look on the other side. You see Crimson's using Super Art 1. He's not. Uh, I was actually confused there because SA2 is not on the table, but he's got Super Art 1, which maxes out at that short distance. And it's only great as like an anti-air. I know it's used in certain matchups against Hugo and Elena, but I don't know how it's going to be working here against Yun. All right, Yun. Try oh, the parry didn't matter. Crimson oh, find the hit, but got to get Maybe that might be it. Maybe that might be why he used that. Stan Fierce backing away from him. He negates that good agent. Uh-oh. Crimson, one more chance. Oh, got him again. This the parry full. Crimson on the comeback train. This is one more round. Winner makes it out of the pools. We'll see. It was the Kikosho, the correct choice to make. Bow. To make it out. No Ganagian cancel after the shoulder. This time Wax gets it. Going from coast to coast there, but Crimson's like, uh, cool. air to air. Yep. That I mean uh, airborne. That's gonna be really bad. Here we go. Having have a stick already. Crimson is in so much trouble. Just cannot let Wax play. Oh, that's safe. Oh no, thought it was safe. That was a good lunge there by Wax. Heads up punish there as he's closing in the distance. Got it in the corner with Canadian on sight. Command grab, swipe, switch. No. One more chance. Now he actually has one more chance. Okay, another one more chance. <laughs> and no super on deck. That means oh, and finds it. Wax. That was a great match there to close it out there. Wax advances. I liked what Crimson was bringing there, you know, and some of that Kikosho tech was working out, kept him in the fight as well, but Wax was able to pull it off, and we saw some great young play throughout this pool as we see Wax making it out on the winner's side, advancing to the top eight, where we will see him tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, see, all this dive kick pressure, they were just kind of whiffing in front of each other. I'm going to have to look back at that situation where he side-switched. I, I don't know what that was. I love that high-low mix-up there from the corner there. And Crimson was really strong, especially when he was able to get that momentum and then get that close-standing fierce and just having that all in the right places there. Hold on. Is it here? No, no, no. no it's not. I thought we were going to see it, but probably not. But, nah, it, it has been a good it's been fun so far and there's still plenty of more action to go unfortunately it will not be with us 
but it will be with others who are just as qualified. Yeah, we'll be around, though. I mean, we got here all weekend. Yeah, I'm going to head over to Chinatown for some uh, Korean barbecue as well. Been an honor there. But let's just look at this. This was the closing moments there. Crimson was able to get a lot of momentum, especially with that comeback that he had in the previous round because Wax really had it like 2-0 in the beginning. But then I just like how Wax was just continuing the pressure, having that situational awareness. Even if he got parried, he didn't stop. He blocked the Kikosho, sent full screen, that lunch punch with the punish. Ugh, brilliant. Like you mentioned, man, 10-dimensional chess. And that's what we hope to see tomorrow in the top eight as well, as the rightful, uh, as the rightful player will make it out. Absolutely. And uh, I think we're going to close things out now. We are. Uh, but, hey, it has been real. I've been Mr. J. I'm Team Chris, pitching relief today. So brought me on the last minute, but, you know, I can't miss any third strike opportunities for the world. This was awesome. Fun pool to commentate. Congratulations to Wax for making it out on that end, and that was a brilliant play. So please stick around on the Riz1 channel. Follow more content from Shaluminati and more content in general from Texas Showdown. Got a lot more action coming your way. It's just the beginning of day two. So in the meantime, stick around. We'll see you soon. Uh Welcome to Texas Showdown 2024. Uh, I'm Tommy Two-Step. And back by some popular demand, <laughs> the one and only Team Chris. They asked me to stick around. I'm like, sure. I just want to show off my Monday Night Raw shirt a little bit more and give you the more of this Street Fighter 3 third strike with this other pool we got. Next up, we got some good talent here. We got Meryl Plays Rough, and I know she's good because she beat my ass in Super Turbo and going up against Joey. On the other side, though, we got Eric the Scruffy, and he's rocking the Sean, yo! We oh got Sean goodness. on stream. Let's go! You never see Sean really in competitive play at all. So this is going to be interesting. Let's see if he's going to go. I don't need the second impact to get good. <laughs> got those low forwards in advance. Oh, yeah. Okay. Got that wheel kick. Nice. Ah, Okay. Gets a low forward and a fireball. Not necessarily safe, but not a bad option, honestly, against Sean. Really, you can play so lenient against Sean because he his punishes are almost non-existent. Right. Yeah, he's just trying to just get in on you and just trying to just excel. This guy's throwing out a lot of crack shots, though, with that Terry Bogard energy. Yep. And it's a good version of the crack shot because the anti-airs. I hate when Terry can't anti-air with that move. I'll throw that KOF game in the trash. Fair. <laughs> Jumping on in. Eric the Scruffy, though, takes the first hit. Now, the meter's, the meter's going to favor him, though, with the uh, with the Super Art 1. So he's going to try to use some EX Fireball in this round. Yeah, right. Because I would do the same thing. Yeah. I mean, Super Art 1 is not necessarily... Uh, it's okay. Ryu has really good Super Arts across the board. Yeah. Um, Super Art 1, definitely not bad at all. It doesn't quite have the same threat as SA3, but still overall really strong. And Sean doesn't really have a single good super. And right now we're going to see possibly oh, a huge no. punish. No. This oh, is the punish. My goodness. Okay. There we go. <laughs> again, missing again. Oh, a lot of whiffing going out there, but it's early in pools. It's you know, early. People to get, are getting warmed up. We're trying to get, like, like, like I said that about Crimson. Like, Crimson dropped, like, two, like, low forwards to SA2. Right. But I'm like, I know the guy's a beast with Chun Li. Mm -hmm. And then when we saw him at the end of the pool, he was connecting. He was just blowing stuff up and just, you know, had a little extra bunnies in the hat coming out. So, yeah. That, that's, that's the pools because I know I dropped so many combos in my first two rounds, but right. I know we're just going to clean it up as it comes along. Yeah. Okay, so we're seeing the character switch right now from Senna. This going guy likes second the, impact. The Ibuki. Uh, that's true. <laughs> These are second impact top tiers. Third strike, mid to low slash garbage tiers. <laughs> and, hey, as a Dreamcast owner, I do love second impact myself. Because the Dreamcast version of Third Strike is Masura. Oh, it's uh, pretty bad. But also, I think there are parts of the second impact that are actually better than Third Strike. Like, stage design, peak. Yes. Music, even though Third Strike has a great soundtrack, still. Yeah. Third, uh, second impact's soundtrack is just insane. Preach. Ooh, okay. And the wind screens, too. We get the full screen neck breaker. Ooh, the EX going oh. for the chip kill there. Trying to test some of the parries there, but Senna got just Ooh, enough okay. salsa to keep it going. Really trying to get those full screen neck breakers going, but that is not really an effective strategy. And Senna punished with the low forward. Eric's the Scruffy on match point. Yeah, Scruffy's just building a wall of normals and confirms. Oh, missing that one, but this time target combo with the punish. Oh, no dice from Senna. Ooh, okay. There we go. Wop, wop, wop. Got three of them. You'll love to see it. Gets a side switch with the dashes because that's why we love third strike. Yes. Okay. Trying to put a little pressure on in the corner. A little bit of that mash jab. Never a bad option. At least at this level. Yeah, but Scruffy's just all in the right ranges oh. there. He backed up a little bit just to get that throw punish there, what it looks like. 
Yep, and then low forward fireball Ooh. connected. Oh, this time, good reaction there from yeah. Stena. Was that a read or a reaction? We don't know. It might have been a read. I think it looked like a read. It could have been a reaction, but either way, it does not matter. Eric the Scruffy taking it a clean 2-0 over Senna. Strong Shoto work. style, too, you know? Yep. Just clean EX fireball. Didn't have to use any of the donkey kick, which oh. I hope we see more of. Looks like they're readjusting the camera here. And or was, uh, maybe that's the live cam. Yeah, oh. this is where we saw. There we go. Ooh. That was the biggest damage hitter there. See, and the crazy thing is Ryu can hit like a truck, right? Mm -hmm. And so in that situation, if Eric the Scruffy wanted to optimize doing Crouch Fierce into the EX Donkey Kick and doing like DP afterwards would have likely just killed. But yeah. either way, didn't matter. He was able to play solid enough. Senna unable to make the the adjustments, and uh, yeah. Because the sequence you just mentioned there, Tommy, which was the um, the fierce punch into the donkey kick and then Shuriken afterward, that does actually more damage than most super arts in the game do. And that's one of the reasons why I gravitated towards Ryu in this game as well, uh -huh. because he really is a heavy hitter when you get those right confirms. And yeah. when we've seen some excellent Ryu players like Daisuke, and yep. uh, one of my favorites is a Bubbles over in New York. Bubbles, Ryu, and he's here. He's here. Oh. He's here this weekend. Oh, he is, He's the lone... New Yorker, and uh, yeah, you you know, love I love New it. York, so I'm so, excited to see him. Yes, so going into the, I'm excited too, man, always. So on this side, we got Meryl Plays Rough. Um, yep. She almost made the top eight of Super Turbo, losing to Zagran. Mm. And because of that, I get to commentate Super Turbo tomorrow, so thank you. There we but go. But she sent me to losers earlier in the Chun-Li mirror. She was fantastic. Uh, mostly mains Cami. So I think Makoto's a good fit for her, and you see it with after that Super getting the juggles going coast to coast. This is a great matchup for Makoto, in my opinion. Yo, for sure. I mean, feel free to call me out, Tommy. Call no. me an idiot at any time. You, know? you, You're right. you, you are completely right. <laughs> I mean, whenever we talk about robbery characters in Third Strike, Makoto obviously in that conversation, but especially versus Akuma, I mean, just able to stun off of one touch, it's huge. And not many other characters can really do that. And so you're just going to look at that stun gauge and you're going to see it build up real fast, especially if Meryl is getting those hits. Yeah, and especially matchups that may be theoretically poor for Makoto. Like, exactly what the, when you get those side switches in there, you're building up the stun gauge, doing things correctly there, and you see just axes and chops, yep. playing the short game like John Daly on the golf course. Oof. He's one of my favorite golfers, by the way. John Daly's uh, he's a wild guy. <laughs> I one day hope I can drink like him. But Fair. <laughs> Meryl plays rough with that quick 1-0. And making it sure it's not first to three, you know? Yep. Because that's a problem with you guys making all your tournaments first to three. Uh, wow. Number one, they take forever. So I got to cancel all my plans with the ladies. <laughs> Number two, <laughs> well, I, get, I get swiped right on Tinder and it's like, nope, sorry. It's a first to three tournament. Yep. And then number two, we got to constantly say like, oh, what's the score? Did we get it? Well, see, the crazy part is, in Japan, this game is primarily first to one. So this game is actually one of the fastest games, because not only is it naturally fast, and there's basically no load times, the game just, I mean, yeah. Two, two one-hit touches with this game, done. You're done in, like, done. 30 seconds. Oh, especially in this matchup, too. I mean, oh, of course. You could get Akuma from zero to stun out of nowhere. I mean... But if you're playing Akuma in tournament, you should know how to prevent that. Yep. Yeah. Um, I mean, you have to play so safe. And one thing we're probably going to see from Joey here is really a lot of lane play. You really just want to space with fireballs. You don't want to overcommit. You want to play that runaway game, and you want to make sure that Makoto is not cornered and there's very little... Oh! Oh. No, no punish! Oh, there, but gets a demon flip to get out of dodge there. That would have really worked oh, out for and Joey. That but that's hit. Not and that's... Dead? Oh, yes, that is from dead. the recovery of the red fireball gives Meryl enough time to focus in there, set aim, and then just get it in there. Yep. And like Meryl plays rough is in Joey's head like Psycho Mantis was in Meryl's head. Yep. MGS1. Will Joey have to switch his controller port to controller two <laughs> to kind of escape these reads? We'll see. Oh, it, okay. Missed the follow up there. Ah, uh, the Karakusa there. That gives Joey an extra extension. Goes for the reset dome to the overhead. Oh. Okay. He's got full meter. You know nice. what I want to see, Tommy? Oh. Oh, he's flirting with stun. He's looking yeah, at I was about to say. This is so scary because really either character can die at this point. But oh. Joey able to seal out the round here and keep himself alive. I mean, he has to win this in order to uh, in, in order to keep playing. At yeah, least on winter's side. the air with the hurricane kick and then able to get that juggle state out there. Let's see. Just backing it up. As you mentioned, Tommy, just laming it out. Playing see, defensively. Okay. Oh. Nice. Yeah, you want to get out of that blunder there, especially when it gets you the low shorts, that axe kick, oh. starts chasing your back dashes. Ugh. 
Meryl's been having a bit of a tough time with those Tatsus, as you can tell. Not really able to punish it. Maybe this is something that she doesn't necessarily have a lot of experience in. Uh, but Joey's taking, starting to take more advantage of it now. Oh, beautiful low dive kick. You know, I, I mean, dealing with the Kuma's dive kicks, I have a lot of fun with it. Uh, playing with my friend, Mr. Pomegranate X. He's yep. kind of someone I've been training with in this game. Ooh. Oh, wow. man, what an the, only, the first hit of the Rojo. Oh, the first hit of the fireball gives clips. Meryl just enough life to chase it down to the corner and take the win. There we go. All right. Strong work, Meryl. Yeah, she's an impressive flyer. Like, I was really impressed with uh, seeing her do work in Super Turbo. Likewise, playing Makoto by the book, just there, getting Akuma by the Adam's apple. Boop, boop. And then being able to double dip post stun. That's why we love Third Strike, you know? We yep. stun him, but we still ain't done. That's one thing that a lot of games that have stun nowadays, they don't allow you to do. I mean, at least on, uh, like, Street Fighter in particular, Street Fighter Five, Street oh, Fighter Four, Five was the worst. You didn't get those those extra juggle points. Do you, I mean, I don't know if this happened to you, Gofton, because I know you played a lot of Urian in SF5. Uh -huh. But the um, but how many times would it happen where you would stun the opponent but not look at the stun gauge, and then you get the stun, they stun, and you confirm your super? Oh, no, it's a mess. It's a blow-up, but... Yeah. We don't have none of those problems with Third Strike. It's tough, yeah. <laughs> but Third Strike, you don't really have to worry about that, which is nice. I mean, all things considered. And this was some of Joey's comeback there. Um, Joey was sitting on a full meter for, like, a big stack of, like, this and the last previous match. Oh, I love that conversion there. That, well, that was a crazy interaction with uh, the Fireball and then the EX Dash Punch from Makoto. And just only taking one hit there. You see some of those things where there's those multiple hits where you get hit, but the rest of it doesn't connect and finish the story. Yeah. So then next thing you know, you are more vulnerable than ever against your opponent. Got to watch out for that. Absolutely. So, hey, I got a prescription, Tommy. And the only, and the only, sorry, I just, never mind. <laughs> No, I'm, I'm it was a valiant effort. Work. You might be able to run it back later. I will. Yeah. I will. I promise <laughs> you. You'll see. You'll see a lot of me. Okay. So um, this matchup is a lot of fun yep. because uh, we were just talking about, uh, you were just talking about Elena, how she has these carrot throws, and I swear, dude, I never see them coming. They come from, like, low forward range. Yeah, they're pretty They're pretty good. Every I time would say I get thrown by Elena, third I best. Third or fourth best. That was a nice conversion there, but I can feel good. Going with the empty low short into nice. the go Hado and gets off to the first point. I love it. Uh, I'm a Street Fighter 4 Rose player, so I hate Elena, and I think she shouldn't be allowed to exist. Uh, well, luckily in Third Strike, she's definitely not nearly as good as she was in 4. Um, a much more fair character has kind of her own set of weaknesses, but right now, uh, Brandon Ometry able to kind of do some good offense. If I recall correctly, I believe he's from the North Carolina region, so we, he's one of our out-of-state competitors. Well, I still love that Sailor Moon shirt he's rocking there with the vintage True. shirt. I like it. It's got that fade in there. And just likewise, I mean, it just shows how he's got this well-aged Elena there. The carrot throw game is strong. Try to throw in some of the mallets there uh, with the overhead game, but that's uh, giving Dr. Phil good to find the opportunities. Oh, this should be a big punish. Okay. Yeah. We got – this is the Brave Dance. Yep. And then oh. more mallet. Got the long oh, one, too. That's goodness. the one that I believe Look is at the safe on block. The, the damage. Ooh, oh, man. man. And Dr. Philgood doesn't get the kill, but still. This could be chip kill territory right now for Brandon Ometry. Oh, there we go. You got a red parry, and unfortunately, Dr. Philgood not able to red parry out of that situation. Brandon Ometry taking the first match. I think he was a little shook that the demon didn't kill. Sometimes yeah. Akuma players, they're ready to stand up and do that Tokido pose. True. With the emblem on the back. So crazy enough, had Brandonometry done that back roundhouse a smidge later, not so early, it would have actually hit Akuma out of Demon because she's airborne for those yeah. frames. So, boom, it would have just been knocked back. But because it was early enough, it actually hit. Wow. And because of that, not taking advantage of those airborne normals, which, I mean, I remember from Street Fighter 4 and 5 was definitely a big cause of headache. Right. I'm um, having those, especially when you can blow up those. When you combine those airborne normals with a car throw game as toxic as hers is, you're going to have a problem. Yep. And I know Carolina, they got a very strong uh, third strike scene. Um, I know Flannel Jack is a yep. hell of a player. He uh, he won an online tournament last night, um, defeating my man, Mr. Pomegranate. Nice. Which was solid. Good Ken player. Uh, but I know there's some good heads up there, and I want to make that trip oh, up absolutely. there on the East Coast. Jibbo's from that area. Oh yeah, Ooh. I love that guy, man. He was actually the first person I commented third strike with. Shout out, shout out to Jibbo. That's my, yeah. that's my guy. Come break of 2018. That was my first ever uh, pool assignment. It was with Jibbo. He was great. He carried me, obviously, but he was awesome. Great reset. Yeah, that was a little bit of a tricky reset. Unfortunately, not able to really get that 50-50 left right, but 
Here we go. Brandon Ometry trying to get something started, but those wake up Tatsu. Oh, no, oh. but jumps out of it. Goes airborne. We want the demon. The crowd wants the demon. We know it. Yeah, of course. Win or lose, we just want demon. Akumas want one thing, and it's disgusting, okay? <laughs> it's like me. I want one thing, but really it's just uh, an adult version of those Lunchables uh, crackers. Well, that's and called uh, charcuterie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A charcuterie, charcuterie board will, will allow you to experience that same kind of joy. <laughs> you mean bougie Lunchables? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're all for it. Dr. Felgen's got one on the board there, and let's see if he's looking for more demon. Now, Tommy, I wanted to ask you. Oh, steps out of the way of that Brave Dance. Let's see what punish is going to happen there. If you punish... Nice. I like it. I like it. Tried and true. Okay. Tatsu, Shoryu, go Hado. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, yeah, just let it hit. Ume, Shoryu. I'm for it. Oh, and the reversal super after landing. Dr. Feelgood on the board. Yeah, he was against the ropes there with, Brandom with Brandometry on match point there, but he's like, hold up. You got to step back. I'm going to go Hado back. He just releases everything in the Shoto bag. He's looking for it there. Yep. This right. is a good competitive match. I'm liking it. It is. And if this was on a Nintendo 64, like the guy's shirt says, those joysticks would be broken. <laughs> True. Or very loose. Very loose. Yeah, very, very loose. Oh, you know when they're like leaning over on the oh. lower left, right side? I know all too well. Yeah. You're automatic because you're uh, too used to aiming at odd job at GoldenEye 64 <laughs> because aiming at FPS games sucked before Halo. <laughs> I love it. All right. Last match. Who's going to take all? Yeah, I wanted to ask, so do you want to approach this matchup like Ryu, where you want to build more of a wall, traditional Shoto, or do you do you, do you stay do you get hungry with Akuma? As Elena? Yeah, no, um, as the Akuma. As the Akuma. The so the thing about this matchup, I played this matchup a lot. Elena used to be my old main, and we have a really strong Akuma in Austin with Luke. Um, really, it can be a little bit tricky to get around the fireballs. So I think that playing the lame game can actually be pretty helpful. One interesting thing to note, Brandonometry actually got went SA3 this time, so he went healing. Yeah. That's not a typical choice that you really uh, pick. That's not a super choice. You usually pick against Akuma. You usually pick it against Cure Hugo. Um, but it actually is working out well, so we'll see. SA2 does so much damage, so losing a little bit of that, but I think it'll end up working out fine, at least from seeing this first round. Yeah, I think it was maybe that uh, Brandon. Brandometry is just not getting the uh, the opportunities to use the utility of where right. to use the super through. Like, either punish some of those situations there. Oh, does this connect? No, it does oh. not. Oh, thought he could punish to not. No. Brandometry right. got a full meter, though. Ooh, oh, nice good parry, parry there. Okay. And get the full healing. Oh, wow. You got a lot of that, Elena too. gets, if you can get a throw off, Elena gets almost the full healing. Is this going to combo? Yes, it is. Dogan's in a good place there. Oh, one conversion away from taking it to the final round. Oh. And uses the universal overhead medium punch, medium kick, and then steps on over them. All right. So right now, not a lot of meter for either character. Let's see. If I were in Brandon, uh, Brandonometry's shoes, I would be building meter like crazy to try and get that healing back on the board. My experience with fighting Elena has been the uh, few times I matched up against uh, Cookie. Uh -huh. uh, she's really good. A legend. Her. Yeah, a legend. Um, and we saw a great performance from her at Evo um, last year. And what, what gets me when I watch other people play against Elena is when I watch someone tech a throw from Elena, and I'm just like, how did they see that was going to be a throw? It's very tough. It's so fast. There we go. Going to get full healing back to perfect. Oh, that healing's a problem. She's greener than uh, the technical air we had on the previous stream. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> Thanks well, for it, guys. it may not even matter. I was gonna say she might not be able to build it back up, but it, I don't think it's actually gonna matter. But we'll see. Doctor Feelgood is still in this. He's got a good amount of meter, but unfortunately gets clipped by the jump in roundhouse. It looks like he was farming there, trying to get to the full meter to start some of his offense. Yep. But Bandometry just playing the neutral, dominated the right way, got those steps. Let's look at the replay here. This is some of the tail of the tape of how Bandometry was able to advance. All right, so right there, that we're dive seeing... with a side switch, Tommy? Yeah, Ooh. we're getting a lot of aggression from Dr. Feelgood. A nice confirm off the uh, short jab short. And then we get the throw. Clean, clean game. Ooh, just to... barely misses the throw. But this, it could have... I mean, you know, we're, we're talking about optimizing gameplay, right? Right. I mean, a low short or low strong into super... Would have definitely been a good option there. Could have also switched sides and maybe not even used super, but done, like let's say, EX uh, spin kicks into just a corner combo. Pretty good damage right there. Good wake-up super right there as well. Kind of yeah. felt that hunger from Dr. Feelgood. 
Yeah, we saw a lot of the Brave dance. Um, even though he did switch from that super art in the early stages of the match, it did help out. And then when he was able to get that go, Hado, working in Dr. Phil Good's direction, that seemed like he was able to take a lot of momentum there. Yep. And then that was just a beautiful parry there by Brandometry, able to extend this round. And then when you get that healing in there, it causes a problem. Yep. It was a good switch there as well. Then let's see, Mallet Smash, he takes him out of the air, chases after the teleport. Could jump back right there to avoid the throw. Now that jumping roundhouse, jump too, I wanted to point out as well. I know it's a pain in the ass uh -huh. to anti-air in Street Fighter Five. Yeah. No, Street Fighter Four rather. I know because Rose had like a whole bunch of anti-airs, and none of them worked against that jumping. I literally had a low profile and pray for the best. Okay, fair. So here we got Ham's Arcade. He's rocking the, uh, the Carmen San Diego look. All right. The I, loop, the warrant, the yeah, hook. yeah. Where are the Rockefeller guys at? All right. Oh, against Jab or J A B since it's in all caps. I respect either way. And he's gotten. We've seen a lot of Hugo in this tournament. And I'm happy to see it. You know, Hugo is the people's champ. People love to watch a good Hugo, and so I think you know, doing the crowd a service by getting these Hugos on the stream for sure. I love hearing all that yelling going on in the crowd. Don't know if it's from another game or but third strike. We promised to get this inside. Oh, and there he goes nice, with that Buffalo super. train and then into the flex. Oh. Yeah, get that defense boost, but this might kill, and yes, it does. Yeah, staying patient there. Jab getting the splatter there. Where in the world is Ham's Arcade's damage? That's the questioning there. He's got to find the loot, the warrant, the crow. Oh. Big SPD right there. Oh, oh no. I think he was trying to go for the meat squasher there. Oh, Wasn't able to block that. Right there, it's like, nope, not paleo enough to take it. Hugo's got that big SA1 on board ready to go. And we saw what that Gigas Breaker could do. If he gets that dash up 720, it's going to be a problem. Oh, right now, Ham's Arcade, though, needs to get some damage on the board. This is not necessarily looking good. A little bit of defense boosting, but really not going to do much. Oh, no. The... Yeah, caught him with the anti-air there, but I'm loving his uses of the low short to stop his momentum. Yep. Particularly in the face of the Lariat, Meat Squasher, whatever options that Hugo has. And right now, now in yeah. chip range territory. Oh! Ooh. Okay. Oh, oh he's just going to do it there. Parry this, baby. Just run it into his face. Full face full of Lariat. Looking he's got back, that look a little like, mischievous. He, he looks back on his crowd. He's looking back at his boys like... That would have been a parry back home. Yeah, I just did that. I would, I would have parried that. I know you're going to lose sleep over dropping that parry. I, I, I do it all the time. It's, uh. Well, it, so that move is actually kind of tough. I don't know if it hits Q while crouching, so it could have been whiffed altogether. Likely the safer thing would have just been do super on wake up and force jab to parry. But all right, Ham's Arcade actually switching to Dudley. Much better character, by the way. Oh, yeah. I like this matchup as well because the damage is going to be there. And, I mean, Q can do damage, but it's such an uphill climb. Yep. I also have a bone to pick with Q because I ran into a Q cosplayer at an anime convention when I won a Street Fighter V tournament for $300. And I did the taunt, and he didn't do it back. Oh, that's... And I've had a grudge against Q fans ever since. That is no good. Sorry, I'm just going wild here. Okay. But I do like this matchup because of the mobility. Yeah. I like, I like the mobility. I like that the setups Dudley can get, and also how he can deceive a little bit with his movement. Q, honestly, his movement can, can get a little predictable. Oh, oh well, it nice. yeah, broke him. That's going to kill. Gets and a 720. Put jab on match point. Dry. Eins, fi, dry. Gets the 720, and now Jab is on set point. Yeah, he's going to make, Jab is going to try to make Ham's Arcade regret not going back to Carmen San Diego. And there we go, corkscrew clock. Corkscrew, Ooh. punch, boom. You can hear the Dallas people in the crowd getting behind their boy. Oh. You know it's a grab. We can hear it from the crowd just a split second before we can see it on the stream. That's yep. what I love. Oh. Great whiff punish with the clap. Andrew oh, nobody home. Oh, He's right no. where he wants him. Oh, he could have. He tried to get that 720. You know that. Of course. That was big 720 energy. Oh, baited it. and he does it again with the one, two, three, the Eins, five, try. The crowd getting kind of hyped for, for Jab here and takes it with a clean 2-0. Jab playing very decisively there. 
And like you said, Hugo being the people's champion, holding it down. Yep. There he is talking to a uh, fellow uh, Dallas-Fort Worth player, Wax. And I like this one there. I love that move there by Ham's Arcade. So but then, but then Jab's like, I'm just going to do it. And yep. I'm going to go look at my friends like, what, you thought you could pair that? There we go. Now, Good one thing I like, right too, is um, you could see Ham was really trying to start off a lot of his offense with yep. the jumping roundhouse punch, which is that big elbow drop. And, I mean, even if it trades, like, it's such a win for Dudley. Yeah. But, like, we saw there how I was able to convert. But I just like how Jab had the awareness of that was his go-to. That's what he was going to. And you saw a lot of um, shifts in his movement, especially at this point of the match. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm honestly, I don't necessarily see this matchup a lot. But one thing I'm kind of curious about is really Dudley needs to be close, right, in order to get his game going. And yes. Hugo wants you close because he wants to hug you. He wants to grab you. And so I'm wondering if that maybe is a little bit of a tricky matchup uh, for Dudley just because they're both kind of aiming for the same thing. And uh, the command grab is kind of a, a nice equalizer, I feel like, personally in that matchup. So, no, yeah. I, I agree with you that too. Especially here, there's just something about Hugo's getting those command grabs here in Texas Showdown. I've seen it like every time I cover third strike. So let's go to the next match here. Jay Wen picking a character that I really like. I love Yang. I feel he's underrated in here. I feel there are some matchups where he's equally as serviceable as his brother counterpart. I mean, unless his brother like is really good with Canadian and getting back to Canadian. Yeah. But I feel Yang is Yang. I love Yang against Shotos, especially yeah. against Akuma, and especially when he can get that EX wreck and get those six hits in the mix. And it doesn't use that much meter on the board too. No, I mean, that's why you pick SA2, so you get all that meter to be able to use the EX Rekkas. Jay Wynn, a solid Yang player out of Houston, actually. Yeah, and he um, confirms off that target combo. Yeah. Being able to get that, um, I believe that's a back medium punch into the fierce there that connects. Yeah, it's uh, a, that's actually, yeah, one of the target combos. The and likewise, um, unlike other anti-projectiles, uh, sorry, unlike other supers that you use just for the meter gain to uh -huh. use the X attacks, the Super R2 is also serviceable. It's a great anti-projectile tool. You can also confirm into it into some situations. I mean, I've comboed into it to close out matches. Like, it, it's just, oh, and nice. again, he's got that dive kick switch. It says, I don't mind being in the corner because this is my own stage. Yep. I mean, the thing is, too, Yang is so good about pushing from one, ca one corner to the other. I mean, he has really yeah. good... Uh, corner carry overall, and he's able to follow up with Oki pretty consistently versus most of the cast. So uh, it really yeah. is remarkable, and I really wish he got more love in uh, Ultra Street Fighter Four. I thought he was a very impressive player as well. The problem is, is that they uh, they gave Red Focus into the game. Um, the problem is, is that they put Red Focus into the game. So Jay wins up one zero. They put Red Focus in the game, which made Ganagin and whatever his version of it was yeah. absolutely useless. Yeah, Senbu. Yeah, Senbu. Because, I mean, now I can do something for more damage with only three quarters of a meter. Yeah, and that super in this game is not necessarily great. It has kind of niche uses, but otherwise, SA2 is the way to go. We call it the Ghetto Ganagin back in Miami. Actually, that's just me. But um, there's a perfect on Jay Wynn's side. There we, we go. got it. I mean, I haven't trademarked it yet, so I'm pretty sure some other Third Strike stream is going to go, Ghetto Ganagin, and yep. then they're going to print it on a t shirt. For, for the rare times it's used, absolutely. All right, Jay Wynn right now. You got to feel good heading into the match point with a perfect. It's just oh. such a good feeling to have, and you're connecting with the Rekkas. I see, I see a command grab coming pretty soon. Let's see. I mean, he's honestly doing really good with just kind of the basic Rekka pressure. I don't know. I'll, maybe could have been there. All right. Can't really survive more than one more, like, Rekka sequence. Yeah, those dash shenanigans can really happen, especially if he connects with it off resets. He's just using it to get some basic side switches to position the corner. Yep. One hit away from closing it out, and then and gets him with the low forward off go. that trade. Gets the low forward. Playing a little RPS with those lows. You throw out some of those shorts. He throws out the medium. He connects, closes it out, and Jay Wynn takes it over Eric the Scruffy. Nice. That was clean. Just good, solid anti Shoto play. Um, Scruffy did show a bit of awareness of the matchup there, but just coming short on spacing issues, yep. whiffing moves like the solar plexus, and then you can see Jay Wynn just having that presence of mind of where you can close out and just continue to just stay strong. I love watching. I mean, like, there's a lot of Yangs I love. My favorite being uh, Nika Ko. Oh, one of the best. He was a fan of me when I really, really sucked at this game. Uh -huh. So, like, I like I love him. You know, yeah. my first experience was a uh, summer jam, and they apologized for streaming my match. That's hilarious. Of 2015, great times. 
So coming back, and I know Nika Ko. I'm um, watching him. I was a big fan of his Yang as well. But oh, he, so he was, strong. He was awesome player, man. Thought he was doing great work. Merrill's back, and we got another Yang. And of course, that super is not called Magnetic Storm. No. <laughs> Uh, nice little glitch. I don't know why the they do that. Is that like an issue with the ROM or the board that they have the wrong name? It's across super? everything. Yeah, I uh, don't know exactly what causes it, but it, it must be a programming thing, I would imagine. Yeah, because in Miami, uh, we got head-to-head -head cabs at third strikes. Arcade Odyssey, so by. Um, we have the head-to-head cabs, and um, they have the same thing, calling it back yep. Storm. Yeah, that's on like every single version of the game that I'm aware of, at least. Yeah, so Merrill taking the advantage there, the initiative there with those dash punches, gets the first punch on the board. And also has a full stock of that Super 1, which I believe is the Abare to Tsunami. Yes. Now I'm butchering pronunciations here. Sorry. Oh. Short, short Rekkas. Closes okay, it. We're already out. in kill range now. Oh. Oh, could it? Oh, okay. It, it doesn't really matter at this point. Misses the confirm. I don't think that chipped, but. Oh, I was like, maybe I meant to do a oh, different move. Oh, actually, it was chipped. Oh. Okay. That. First hit does a lot of chip. Okay, good to know. That's good awareness. She's got a great command with this character. It's very similar to um, how she uses uh, Kami and uh, Super Turbo as well. Right. Using that kind of movement. Also very solid with Chun-Li as well. So going back to it. Now, what I like with Yang, actually, I started experimenting with in the Ooh. arcade is um, I like Super Art 1 with Yang. Okay. Because in particular, if I'm in a matchup that doesn't have projectiles, so I'm not using Super Art 2, um, I know you want the, the you want that EX Rekka to come in there, but I love how Super Art 1 is safe on block. And you can just randomly mash it through pressure. <laughs> that, that's just what I do. I, I mean, fair. It works. I respect it. This is off a lot of people on Fight Kid. <laughs> All right, Karakusa City. That's the first one we saw on the match there. And the All cartoons right. will be able to respond back. Oh, with the just EX of their own. More reckless. I was about to call him Overdrive. Oh, Ooh, that wow, pin that's me. a pretty, pretty meaty dive kick right there. Yeah, it looks, I love those parries where you hit in front of the person right behind you. It's like still has that hitbox in the right areas. An ancient Carthage there, just able to push forward. Yep. Marching across like Hannibal to the Alps. I know too much about history. I'm sorry. Fair. I know nothing about history, so you've got me covered. Uh, well, <laughs> let's just say... That player two might not be a big fan of the Roman Empire. Oh my goodness. Oh. The super there. A lot oh, of good wow. pressure from ancient Carthage. Yeah, I mean he's got the momentum here. And it's really close to tying it up there. Merrill was in a good place there, nearing match point. But still, Ancient Carthage has had the life lead through this whole second fight. Nice air to air. Oh. That's okay. the medium punches is nasty. Oh, oh and nice. It out. You wanted to fish for a little more pressure. Merrill makes the move to put it on match point. Oh, there we go. Whiffed. Rolled a little too far. You, you know what Carthage is trying to do here. He's trying to um, avoid the Caracusa. Of course. Yeah. Now, the thing is, is Merrill's landing hits that could go into the SA1, but she isn't quite hit confirming into them. So maybe she has a more comfortable way that she's used to, um, but... You know, for example, doing the low short into the dash punch, she can link the super, but doesn't Ooh. even matter. This might kill. Oh my gosh. Oh, so close. Literally has a pixel. Not even a pixel. That's the magic pixel. Look. But doesn't matter. Doesn't Ancient Carthage matter. unable to bring it back. Merrill moving on. Merrill able to close it out. Very strong. I wish that Super R1 would have killed. I mean, that was amazing. Just that, just that lunge to the groin. Right there at that clutch area. Just like, and we saw oh. her off to an amazing start with those axe kicks and the corner pressure. There she's just like, I'm just having fun. I'm going to match it out. That was a hell of a great parry there against that dive kick. How you pointed out how it's super meaty. Let's keep on backing it up. Oh, nice. Gets the dive kick with the stand strong follow-up. Man, Carthage really had the momentum in the second fight. It was really close to bringing it to a one on a one one point on either side. Yep. But in the end, be able to connect with that because she just knew that Carthage was going to autopilot with that wreck of there, called it out with the neutral, sends it home. Oh, man. And then and that. Oh. One big thing there was ancient Carthage. It looked like he was going for the crouch strong or crouch uh, forward. I'm sorry. Uh, follow up. And crouching damage is increased in this game. So if you get hit crouching, it actually does more damage. So that first hit did a chunk. Yeah. 
And we saw, like, it, it just came so close. We really thought it was just on the pace to kill. So if you thought you had enough Hugo, have you had enough Hugo? I can never have enough I, Hugo. I, I think about Hugo more than most people in the chat think about the Roman Empire. Oh, my goodness. So, which, by the way, was overrated. So on the other side, we got the winner's quarters here. We got Big Bad Wolf. This is a big favorite Hugo player. He's done very well. Multiple top eight appearances as well. Yep. Uh, most recently, well, not most recently, but like I did see him last year in the CEO top eight yep. doing work. So also great player. Brandometry, we saw earlier with this Elena. I was able to do work. One different thing about Big Bad Wolf is, so he uses SA3, uh, which we saw as Hammer Mountain. In that situation, was able to use it to actually just get away. And that's kind of a nice little option select they have. Um, if they think that the person's not going to hit a button or whatever. Yeah, I think in particular with the way the neutral is, I think that's a decision that will favor him as well. Um, also interesting is Brandometry is using the SA3, which is the healing. Yeah. And I guess with Hugo's slow movement and having to commit certain options to traverse, it's, it's going to be able to give her opportunities to gain back some of that HP, and maybe that could lead to just a few more SPDs being taken. Yeah, so a couple of reasons why Elena would use it in this match. Obviously, right there, able to get back most of that life. Um, the other thing, too, is Elena can actually do pretty good combos without using as much EX meter specifically on Hugo. But, oh, my goodness, doesn't even matter. Gets clapped in the air, finishes off. Big Bad Wolf, first like match. What I wanted to see was I was hoping when he did the clap to kill that the crowd could sink the applause as well. Mm. So we all go like, you know, like, like a big, a huge, big like, clap. yeah, like a big clap. I like it. Yeah, that'd be that'd be dope. We got to see more of that. But let's see Brandometry. We saw some great stuff from Elena earlier. Let's see what kind of adjustments makes this strategy. Switching to Ken with the blue gi. Okay, so I like it. Three. I like it too. Classic. Sorry, my throat there. All okay. good. All right, nice. Gets the empty jump into the throw. Red Bull in the wrong pipe. That's what it was. Okay. So, moving back. Yeah, the card throw, but he's going to have that parry throw, and he does that like clockwork, Tommy. Yep. Right now, Big Bad Wolf slowly walking down Brandon on the tree. Nice. It looks like he's respecting a lot of that stand roundhouse, that go to pub. Brandon Ometry, wake up DP, let it rip. Wolf using the air special to get out of it and reverse the corner pressure. Oh, good Meters sweep on there. Deck. And also, if you see Big Bad Wolf has switched to Super Art 1, so we're going to see that Gigas Breaker that can kill oh. at any moment. That's likely a character-specific thing, but oh my goodness. Get close. into my loving arms. Big Bad Wolf now on set point. See, notably, notably in that situation, if I was in Randometry's shoes there, what I would see is I would see, okay, maybe he wants to save that meter for the next round. So I'm probably just going to like right. squeeze in a little bit. But because of that, that was a good awareness of Wolf. Saw it on the table, takes it. I don't care, you know. I'll go up 1-0 with it. Yep. If I need to build it up again, I'll build it up again. Oof, nice. Let's check on the dash there. Two claps. There oh, we go. two claps, man. dash into the SPD, a classic. Four oh. claps. Misses with the Larry. It goes straight to the Jin Rai Kiyaku. Okay, not bad. And he's still got more on deck as Ooh, well. He's okay. connected off the short short. And if he gets if he whips a few more normals there, gets some more offense. Oh no! Splat! Forgot about that. Okay, nice throw there. Oh, he's Ooh, still scooping. That might have been a 360. Okay. Oh, Ooh. Patrick Pierce. Wow. Back up. Big okay. throw after the dash under. A little dash under action. I like it. It looks like Wolf was looking for something else there. He shrugs and let's see. Immediately going to stop his movement there and reaches for it. Ooh, the Tachi Gigas? Okay. That's right. He's going to make him look like a broke Abitri. Broke. The Gigas Breaker. Gigas is broken here. Wow. Just Already. A few hits, a few splats, a few slaps. To advance over to the winner's semifinals. Good parry. Big Good low medium punch. Doesn't have to extend at all. He's got such a big life lead. He can play so lame and really force Brandon Ometry to come to him. Yeah, and he's got 70 seconds to do it. I mean, that's longer than most commercials, I'll tell you that. True. Especially on Peacock. Ooh, okay. Oh, God. Wake up super. Kind of getting into some desperation here. But let's see. Oh, get into like, my uh, loving arms. Now, uh, once he saw, oh, you want to grab? Yep. <laughs> Boop. It's, like, it's kind of like looking like the... Um, when the hurricane was trying to choke slam the Undertaker. Yeah. <laughs> Big hug right there. Just don't work like that, and that throws him back. And yeah, interesting to see how this will play against the um, the other Hugo Jab who we saw earlier. Right. But I love Big Bad Wolf. I mean, I love how like consistent he is 
with those confirms, and you can see he, he's thinking ahead. Like he's he's playing chess with this character. Yeah. And as soon as he finds an idea, it's like he knew. He knew, and it looked like Brandomitra was going to try to loop it again with the card throws, and he's just like, Big Bad Wolf is like, I, I cannot yeah. go to bed at night getting card thrown twice as a grappler. No. Oh, that Tachi Giga. So that was, that was a little spicy. I like that. Yeah, I just love the way that dog on wheels just bounces up off there in response to yep. that impact. That was beautiful. Several of the items actually bounce, which is pretty funny. A little bit of charm to the to the stages. Yeah, this is an excellent stage, too. I love it. Oh, just, again, the big scoop. So, Welcome have you thought you had enough Hugo? Yep. We're giving you another dose of vitamin I love H. It. Jab is back this time against Jim Prom. Or, yeah, I think that's how to pronounce it. Jim Prom? Yep. Give crumb. I was trying to pronounce it like a Khalil Gibran, who's the author of The Prince. So, no, 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 not author of The Prince. This is a nice little Texas match here. We got Jab, who's from Dallas, versus Give Crumb, who's from Houston. Uh, if you actually spell Give Crumb backwards, it's Big Mark. Oh! That's, that's his name. Uh, that's so, yeah. crazy. So, See, that's, that's that Zach Morris tech. You know, you rearrange people's letters to try to see if there's a secret name in there. Exactly. Yeah. It's so a Big Mark. So, yeah, so... This matchup, uh, I can't remember if we've seen this matchup already today with just us. I don't think we have. We're probably going to see a lot of sh movement from uh, Gibcrum just because you've got to stay slippery. I mean, we're seeing so many air hurricanes. It's showing up on the Noah radar. Yeah. I mean, right now, Jab is almost looking a little bit unsure of what to do. We've got a lot of demon flips from uh, Gibcrum, a lot of air tatsus. I mean, doing those little punishes is going to help, but, I mean, he's going to be able to stay pretty slippery. Yeah, it took Jab 31 seconds to get one hit. Ugh. And he's got a lot of HP that works in his favor, but nice. Jim Crumb just taking to the skies. Yo, the club is jumping, jumping as everything else, all that fruit on the floor there surprisingly doesn't fall out of the plate. It's just, it's fruit for show, you know? It's like, it, same with the meat and the forks in it. Actually, I don't know. Those That might all be legit food. Th this is just, I mean, this art design is just so peak Capcom. It's I so mean, cool. The, the way this game is hand-drawn and... It just it, it always it just has this timeless aesthetic to it. Yep. And in my opinion, like you start to see that this game looks more beautiful than like newer newer games that are old now, like Street Fighter Four. Yeah. This game is much more gorgeous than that one. Oh, for sure. And I love both games equally. I really do. All right. Right now, Gibb Crumb's still playing that same game, really just being slippery. Yeah. I mean, look at the that. The air to airs just, are so on point for this guy. Just I not allowing himself to be caught at all. A little too far to catch with the super in the air, but a good idea overall. Oh, and see, here we go. My C. Yep. Connects with one of them. Oh, he faked the teleport. I like that. Save that tech for later. And then and gets a big scoop, but doesn't kill. He's throwing everything out there. All the plasma and what parried from Valiant. Jab. But not enough, man. That was like he was like going Kamehameha, Gallic Gun. I need every single beam with me to take it. <laughs> R.I.P. Toriyama. Yeah, the goat. Uh, good good work overall by Gib Gibcrum there. Was just staying so slippery throughout the entire time. I mean, that's really just how you want to play it. And so, I like this adjustment. Love this go. adjustment. Because also, he was going with Super Art 1 Hugo, and the way Gibcrum was taken to the skies, it just wasn't happening. But if he's able to go air to air with the jumping roundhouse, he can really, and also with that DP, he can really cause a problem now. Oh, I mean, look at that damage and that stun. And he gets a damage boost. Oh, my Below goodness. North corkscrew cross. That way guaranteed. And he's just going to sway his way on in there. You want to parry the first one? Boom. Here comes that two-piece. You there caught the go. drumstick, but cut. here's the thigh. This is actually a really smart switch just because Akuma gets deleted, right? Worst health in the game. Oh, for Dudley sure. Dudley does damage. I mean, damage. And that's what helps him in the matchup with Ken, is you see the damage disparity even in that one, and Ken has okay health. Like, even in that situation there, we, you're just looking to trade. Yep. But what I like is what Jab is looking for here is to try to fly under the radar of those fireballs. Nice. I know that was, a big Akuma, that was a big weakness for Akuma in Street Fighter V. Oh, we got the taunt in there, oh. too. Let's see the punish. It's oh. enough. Probably could have saved meter in that situation, done like a low forward Tatsu into, to DP, but honestly, better safe than sorry. Just make sure that you've got the win. You you, you know, try to try to seal the deal right now. Air parry against the air fireball. I love it, but bigger awareness from Jim Crab. And oh. despite in the wake of that counter pick, he's on match point, and he's real close. Got the reset. Oh. Demon flip, that pick is done. Wow. 
unable to really uh, acclimate to the style of Give Crumb, that aggressive, slippery style. So good work overall to Give Crumb. Moving on, and then we got a little bit of replay action here. Uh, it's brilliant to watch. I mean, at first, off to an amazing start, just taking the skies all the time, just turning that stage into a trampoline, deleting Gigas 1. Love the counter pick here by Jab. Off to a great start getting some of those hits in. Jumps in that roundhouse, and look at that. Already 40% mm. of your life gone. Into the corkscrew cross, and now you're into that deficit. Oh, that round was just so clean and perfect. So good. But around this area, Gibcrom just adapts a little bit, holds on to some pairing, got the resets, gets the, gets a little bit too much of that uh, flippy action there. Right. And then takes it, making his Akuma look like a cruiserweight. Whew. So we got Jay Wynn. Um, we saw earlier, had a great Yang. Also, he was a baller in Alpha 2 last night. Played amazing in the top nice. eight there. Um, I believe he got into the top four. You know, But I know he's rocking some medals as well. Merrill plays rough. We saw earlier, got ninth place in Super Turbo. Played fantastic so far. This Makoto has been on point working it through the winner's wow. bracket. This should be a good, pretty good match, I think. All right, a lot of patience. You don't see this matchup too often either. Uh, definitely not in America so much. Yeah. We, we've right. definitely got a few good um, Makotos sprung about. We've got a couple good Yangs. But I feel like they're all in different territories, so you don't really see it much. Straight off that overhead, but I feel like this is going to be a different matchup for what uh, Meryl was facing in the previous uh, in the, in the previous uh, area of the bracket there because Jay wynn has got such good movement around there. But we did see Meryl hold her own previously against Yang using some of that neutral jumps to bait out the uh, the wreck up. Oh, okay, and then I right respect there, it. Got him to chase, got him to chase. And these characters, both of them, have a lot of good air attacks, anti-projectile moves, go-to damage, Oki, and a command grab. Yep. I mean, Very they've similar. got pretty much everything you'd want in a mix-up character. They got good lows, good mids, command grab, big damage. And that overhead with that reach. We've seen Yang get a lot of mileage out of that. Connecting with that meaty, low, strong, able to set up a situation. Oh, get more of that chip damage in there. Now, we saw earlier uh, in the last round, uh, but Barrel plays rough was in. She used that super art one against the pressure when she was yep. able to predict that the opponent was going to overextend. Like oh. yeah, neutral jump against the Rekka. It's so close. Count. Okay, not quite dead. Oh, those were two good blocks on those dive kicks. Yeah, difficult oh. dive kicks. Oh, really and the great stance blocking. Short into the EX chop. So good. Once she got that space, goes for the dome. And that's the thing. When you're looking at so many different things Makoto could do, you do not see that overhead coming. I mean, True. it's so deceptive to see. And Merrill was able to steal the round there, despite some really good confirms and clean play from Jay Wynn. Right. Yeah, but we're going to see more of it here in winter semis. We're getting real close to getting out of those pools. Yeah, this has to be, yeah, I'd say pretty close to being winner's finals. Not quite, but we're getting close. Yeah, over on the other side, we've got uh, Jim Crom has to fight another Hugo, which is Big Bad Wolf. That's going to close out the winner's bracket of this pool. Nice. Okay, gets the reset. Reset. Another one. Dash up into the throw. Oh, oh domed. You don't see it coming. Oh, oh, okay. You can Gonna feel those up. bangs on Yang's forehead growing a little deeper, going a little oh, lower. Oh, this is big. Not going to kill, but going to get close. And that EX punch does just enough of a number to push him back. She's fishing for the record. I mean, at this point, well, nice. Gets clipped by the stand forward, but really was able to chip kill. Probably could have done a, a random dash punch oh. and likely just chipped out. Yeah. Easily would have taken that one. And let's see. Oh, gets a launch and then tries to reset it with oh. the dive kick. But Meryl's like, oh, you want to play the corner? Nice. Boom. Look at Good the damage. damage on the board. Good stun as well. Oh, okay. With the raw EX Rekkas. And then takes that back throw. That's strong. Using the axe kick there from the neutral jump. That catches a lot of players because like that, that's an effective move there against like players who punish neutral jumps. I know uh. there's a few of those in footsies that can. They're fantastic players that do. Rekka, nobody home. Overhead's happening. Oh, uh, but he's keeping it all safe on block. But oh, there's an oh, he did nice. his own neutral jump with the bait. A lot of Take pressure. The... Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Look at that. Oh, there. my goodness. Oh, they're just whipping kicks out there. And nice. oh, he gets underneath and gets that one scoop out there. But again, Jay Wynn countering. Jay Wynn staying alive. Staying alive here and trying to give Meryl a taste of her own medicine in order to 
be able to turn the tables here. I dig it. Dive kick on point. Merrill's got the better throw, though. Here comes the corner. Oh, nice throw tech. A lot of neutral jumps here, just trying to avoid really any type of offense. Okay, not able to make home, anything. But no punish. Full record there. He still has another meter on Ooh. deck. He can probably do two more of those. Yep, and oh. he's shim shimming y'all to get that one. <gasps> okay, hold on, let's see. Yeah, Meryl's got to reach for the juggler there. She needs a little bit more to get oh, into that super no. hard one and close it out. It's really close now. Oh, oh the EX roly-poly. <laughs> the roly-poly. Jay Wynn, a Wynn. Limp Biscuit fan. Rolling, rolling, rolling. He's just feeling like the Undertaker's WrestleMania 18 entrance. There you go. around the ring. How is Barrel going to adjust there? And you're seeing Jay Wynn starting to do some of the things Barrel was doing as well. The same bait, same similar aspect. So, yep. Real good class of styles. Perry Sweet, love it. Oh, there we oh, go. Nice. Yeah, off of the whip grab. Front Jay right Wynn there. Able to turn the momentum here. Fakes Ooh. one way, goes the other with the dive, and then catches. Catches Merrill off the ground, resets it with the dive kick. That's Dang. some of the best corner pressure we've seen all in these pools so far. Yeah, Jimmy. absolutely. I mean, that's one of Yang's strong points, right? You get into the corner, it's, yeah, it's office hours because he's going to work. You know what I'm saying? Indeed. Oh. That's where he sets up shop. Boom. Miss, huh? More for the jugular here. Merrill spends a little bit of the bar and then spends more of it to get the dome. And then okay, Karakusa City. Done. Yes. yes. One more round to advance on both sides. This has been a tight match. I like it. I like the back and forth. I like the adjustments. And now it's going to come together here. Oh, that was so close. Merrill's got the right ideas. Oh, went for that long overhead chop. Okay, nice. Good defense right there with blocking the overhead. Oh. Jay Wynn's trying to keep the corner. He's like, I gotta rely on holding on to this area. Okay. The side switch. Now back another side switch. Gets that EX Reckida to whiff punish on that chop. Got Merrill a bit overextending, but Merrill caught him with the neutral drop. Doesn't get the punish. Gets the throw instead. Oh, oh this is close. Oh, that could have been. That Merrill's been got the full hard. meter. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh gets, gets so again. close to the ground. Gets hit with the chop to the ankles. The big sweep. That instant air axe kick. I mean, I would have loved to see more of that in that matchup for Merrill, but definitely worked out, especially with the direction that Jay Wynn was trying to take in that reach at the end. Yep. That was a clutch output to win. And, I mean, she makes a lot of really great clutch plays. If you watch a lot of her replays, um, some of the things she'll do, how she's able to get the super and fight through tight situations, um, you've seen her make a lot of scrambles just work in her favor. Yeah. And that's what's taken her to the uh, winner's finals here at the uh, third strike. Well, even with that last uh, replay, the one before this one, she had two really good blocks on those dive kicks, and she couldn't afford to, to get touched at all. And yeah. then was able to finally punish with the throw and then end up se securing the round and the match in that, in that sequence. So um, overall, really strong play. But Jay Wynn, I mean, the way he ad adapted from the beginning of the fight to the end of the fight, and then really looked like he, he always had that momentum going. But oh, man, nice. this is just Ow. a nightmare. I mean, that... I mean, you're just getting put into the vortex. Oh. Into the vortex. Oh. It's, it's a nasty vortex, I'll tell you that. It's a worse vortex than the Echo of the Dolphin one. Right, and, and then boom. off the ground, just, ah, heel to the face. Yep. Welcome to the Other side of winner's semis here. The winner goes to play Merrill. It's Big Bad Wolf against Jim Crab. So we're going to see a repeat from what we saw from the previous match. It's going to be more Akuma versus Hugo. Yep. All right. I'm excited. So let's see here. This should be a good match. Hammer Frenzy, Masatsu Go Hadel. Like you mentioned before, Big Bad Wolf using the Super Art 3. So I think really this should be pretty... I'm, I'm guessing that the SA3 in this situation is really to get out the teleport. Um, could be like a, a good reaction uh, sequence there. Feels like the Akuma wants to get out of the corner. Boom. Can SA3 the other way. Uh, but let's see. Now this is uh, Jim Crab not exactly uh, jumping as much as he was previously against Jabs Hugo that we saw earlier, but this time using the air toxic instead of the teleport to escape. I like that option as well. Well timed, well executed to get up, get away from that. Cage. Nice, good jump back right there. Oh, well, oh, clips him with one. 
not quite worth, but you know, better than nothing. Yeah, I mean, it push. What's better is it pushes uh, it pushes uh, Goki over to the corner there as well. Oh, oh, how he knew he'd get a range for that because that range, that was a little shifty there. That was like a certain move, a certain step would have gone a whole different direction. Yep. Oh, nice. That move in particular going to be pretty good. Uh, Akuma's towards strong. It's actually throw in Vol. So it's a throw in Vol and it's an overhead. The reason it's throw in Vol is definitely a glitch, but it works. And it's Kara canceled. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, punishes on nice. the Super R3. And that's just the first round of play we've had so far. And just great back and forth play from both. And to, to, take, to have a match with Akuma that goes to 17 seconds left, uh, right. given his low HP, that uh, kind of says a lot about the pace of the match. Trying to get a little defense boost right there with uh, Akuma's taunt. Or uh, not Akuma, Hugo's uh, taunt. Hugo's taunt, yeah. Definitely buffs him up there. And we saw Jip Cram, um, I believe, using some of Akuma's taunt as well to get a little bit more involved. Guess that the damage boost from the Akuma, got the defense boost from the, uh, the Hugo. Good spacing on the dive kicks. Even though he was able to get them low below the knee, this one Hugo is able to, Big Bad Wolf is able to take a step back and catch him. Some decent damage, catching some of those air fireballs. Nice. Good, good amount of patience from Gibcom from right now, just trying to chip away. Wolf here is picking his spots, though. He's picking his spots. He's finding it because he's, he's in the range of that big move. Absolutely. Look at that. Both, both sides very patient. Yeah, with the full meter, though, Jip Cram's like, oh, yeah, I got bigger moves. Oh. Oh, oh nice. Short, short super. Uses Gets one of those. Damage buff. The taunt. Overhead on the demon flip. Okay, oh, is that going to catch? What? No, not quite. Oh, that was still brilliant, though, to escape that. And desperation super. Gib Crumb had the wherewithal to block, punish, taking the first match. Man, he was about to get torture racked there, but he uses that air fireball to escape it. Hella great awareness. It seems like Jim Crab knows all the ways to avoid getting grabbed either on land or sea. Yep. And he's like, we got to take it, man. That That's how we swim out of pools, baby. Surf and turf. We're swimming. Now, that's a good stroke you got there. Yep. I was just dreaming. <laughs> uh, I practiced. All right, here we go. Give Crumb up. 1-0 versus Big Bad Wolf. Texas trying to defend home territory. All right, nice patience once again. Ooh. He used the dive kick to go underneath the jump. I loved it. That was good. Using the dive kick to low profile, that is some galaxy brain. If this was 10D chess, I mean, that would take a bishop or a pawn. You know? A lot of focus. Oh, got him with the palm there. Okay, nice. A lot of patience, once again, not really trying to overextend. There we go, going to the other side. This is a big game of chase. Oh, oh and that's your combo. Oh, I could burn nice off link. the knee. Off the close dandy medium kick to the Gohado. Doesn't do enough damage, doesn't do a bit of damage, but it puts him there. Oh, two hits from the Tatsu. That's Hatsu, so good. If I'm not mistaken, that's a medium Tatsu, right? Uh, so that might have been a heavy. Oh, might have been a heavy? Yeah, because it looks like some of them, like, on the last hit there, they're able to get some pushback that makes it yeah. seem like a block. So, yeah, the, the light Tatsu does one hit. I think medium does three, and then heavy does four, if I recall correctly. It is interesting using Tatsu as a pressure tool. Kind of yeah. over carry, push him back. Now, Jim Krem here is on match point, advancing over to winner's uh, finals. If he gets this right, Meryl plays rough is waiting. Oh! Oh, wow. Big jump in, but isn't able to confirm. Air to air, big scoop energy. Pushing him back. Give this, him. Is, this is really working out in Jim Crumb's favor. I mean, he's playing. He's thinking, he's thinking, Tommy. Do I demon? Should I demon? No, no. <laughs> you got to play here. It's so safe. I mean, the inherent urge for an Akuma player to want to demon is massive. Like, I they, mean. that is what they want. That's what they live for. But in that situation, honestly, keeping it safe with Fireball, you'll do fine. Would you say that Akuma players in clutch situations are more eager to demon than, say, a um, surgeon in the emergency room just wants to get cutting. Maybe. I watch too many medical TV shows. Maybe. Not very accurate, you know? <laughs> like, I'm talking about not doing CPR when someone goes into cardiac arrest, those kind of shows. Well, but, yeah, I mean, I worked in an ER. I think it's, uh, 
I'm, I'm sure we want to save people whenever we can. As, as long as there's no documentation to say otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> that confirmed there by Jim Crow was brilliant. I mean, it really set the tone for, for, for this match. It really established, like, how uh, uh, just, just play the right way. I mean, this is how you have to play this matchup. You can't try to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Hugo as, as Akuma. You don't have the life for it, and he has an abundance of life. But you just got to play lame. You got to play lame. So here we are. This is our winner's final. It's Jim Big Crab against winner's Merrill finals. Play rough. Let's see. I'm going to uh, let me pull out the bracket so I actually have a good visualization of all this. I don't know if this is the uh, – I don't know if this is going to be the last one on stream. Um, but we know it's not. Oh, we got more action? Oh, yeah. We got we got more action for sure. I mean, we got bubbles. Uh, we got and bubbles. And stuff, we got so. bubbles coming up next. Yeah. Okay. I'll try not to be too biased. All right. Let's go. Well, let's see. I like this matchup, too. We've seen some Akuma versus Makoto previously in this bracket. Wow, it's like this whole bracket is just Yang, Akuma, Makoto, and Hugo. Yep. Oh, and Dudley, right. I don't think we've seen a single Chun yet. Or no, yet. we haven't. We saw a few of them in the... Is that work? Oh, and this should be... No. Oh, no. Ends up dropping. Dropped the juggle, whipping the Karakusa, but still, it's just too much for Jim Crumb to handle. He's seeing stars out there. Yep. He's confused. What side is what? And that's not a good place to be when you're cornered. No, not at all. Uh, hit him on the backdraft of that hurricane kick. Yeah, so it looks like... Okay, we'll go ahead and I'll update with the bracket here in a few. All right. Oh, got him. We got to see that slipperiness. Same thing. Crossed up from full screen with that Tatsu. You love to see it. Demon flip after the anti-air. You know, seen a lot of that in classic third strike action, that close standing fierce. Oh, gets him with the Karakusa. Karakusa City. Oh. Axe kick. Oh, nice carry three. right there. Oh, my goodness. Clips with the EX dash punch. KKZ. Oh, oh I respect it. I respect it. Yo, this dude, uh, typh Typhoid, in the last uh, pull, he went two for two with the KKZ. It's such a rare thing. You don't really see it much because it's so situational. Like, you see it way less even than Demon. And if, if I'm not mistaken, the motion for it, I'm not an Akuma player, but I think it's uh, down, down three kicks. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's the move for it. So, yeah, not – I mean, it's pretty much Chun-Li's anti-air in Street Fighter Six. Yeah, so it's a good call to, out. Easy to do. Yep. So, a little – okay, so this is – yeah, this is – Determining winners finals, or this is winners finals. Whoever wins this gets in the top eight winners uh, for tomorrow's tournament. Um, and then the other side actually already has a lot of completion as well. So that's the next match is also the winners match of that bracket. Oh, okay, yeah. So we get to give you uh, some other talent. It's going to be Bubbles against Meth Rosenstock. All right. I don't know who Meth uh, Rosenstock uses. I know Bubbles uses, uh, obviously. Makoto. Makoto, <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, oh, good nice parry against the chop, and he's always using that overhead. Oh, after that, sorry, the reset with the low short. Boop. All right, Give Crumb uh, on the verge of going to losers. Oh, oh, Bobby's okay. gonna jump forward. What's out. An axe kick would have done a number on Jim Crumb's Akuma. Oh, boom. Okay, nope, no Tatsu there. Kind of missing some of the follow ups. Oh, wow, wow, what a trade. Ends up trading the super with the fireball. Yeah, and that was a reckless air fireball, too, there from Jim Crumb throwing it out. And it's amazing that he didn't get punished like that. Interesting how to see how this is going to play out. Nice. Go. Gets the throw. This is so dangerous. Oh, my gosh. All right, all right. Jim Crumb refusing to, to go out this quickly, able to Tatsu out, take that round but has to still win this round in order to stay alive in the winner's bracket. Ooh, look oh, with the throw, the and that just gets Oh, oh no drops the SA2. Man, Jim Crum just got the luckiest Karakusa there ever. So plus, lucky. Yo, she grabbed it too much. Jim Crum is just like, you're too close, man. All right. Oh. Back oh. away. Oh, okay. Oh, catches the dash punch there. You want to spend a little bar. You can tell she's buffering. It looks like she might be trying to buffer for maybe an SA2 full screen. I mean, it's worth it, honestly. The risk reward is huge. Oh, Ooh. the Karakusa. Karakusa hits it with it again. As oh! It the back the back catches it with the low short. EX. Gashes up. And that More is Karakusa. And oh! oh. With, with the, the SA2 and... There we go, Merrill. Is this three out of five? 
No, it's two out of three. That's no, two no, out no. of three. It's not. It's not. It's not top eight. It's not top eight. It's not top. Eight. Oh, so this wasn't the final to the pool. No, this is. I I have the bracket. I mean, up. we're looking at the bracket here. Yeah. Yeah, pools of two is still two out of three. It doesn't get three out of five until usually winners finals, grand finals, losers finals. How dare they have the nerve to try to impose three out of five in a pool? Yeah, this ain't Street the Fighter Six. Audacity. This no, and I don't think Street Fighter Six should be three out of five either. I'm in the minority about that, I know, but <laughs> I was about to say that that game is pretty unforgiving. <laughs> yeah, like it should be three out of five if you're playing with people who, like if it's like Ken. Right. But like I play Chun Li, so three out of five is like a marathon. That's true. I play lame, so it's like She'd be doing combos. Yeah, I just gotta like, you know, I, I take my time when I play. But in the meantime, Merrill, amazing work here. I mean, just being able to take out Yang's and Akuma's marching all the way out. Let's go over to the other side of the bracket here, the other winner's final here. We got Bubbles. We've seen him do an impressive performance at tournaments at East Coast Throwdown. One of New York's finest players, Bubbles. And on the other hand, we got more Makoto. This, Meth this Rosenstock. Is good, this is a good-ass Makoto, though. I know yeah. that for sure. Meth has been a up-and-comer within the Dallas scene, has had some really strong results. Okay, this is so. This is going to be an interesting uh, match, right? Because Bubbles is the invader. He's one of the invaders from New York, and he's um, got that dungeon. So you better get oh, those berries on lock. Oh my goodness, the air to air! I know. Boop, gets boop, that stand roundhouse for the extra hit. Just gets that three piece. And Tommy, I wanted to pick your brain about this. Like, yeah, reuse uh, close standing fierce punch. If I recall correctly, it's one of the few characters that has like a five frame. Is a five framer, and only uh, Goki and Chun Li with their close standing roundhouse are like, similar, right? Okay. Oh, there's the parries. There's the parries. Oh, my goodness. But it's not enough. And then Bubbles is like, I can parry, too. Nice. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, great nice. Gets the throw right there. Oh, low short into the dash punch. Super. Got to be real careful looking out for the stun. Now at this point, looking out for the kill. Oh, oh, my oh goodness. Goodness. these boys. Good. Oh, nice. And then That was actually super hits. smart. Oh, but you know something, that Tommy. Wait, wait, wait. Let's tail the tape here. Let's let's rewind a second here. If Bubbles would have just let it rip with the two-hit Dungeon to Duke, it, it would have got stunned. Mm. You don't think so? No, there, was, there wasn't didn't enough? have much stun on the board. Oh, okay. So, so what ended up happening there? Oh, my goodness. Uh, we'll, we'll review it here shortly. We'll review it, yeah. yeah. All right. Nice. Gets the, the super again. Oh, that dash up. Karaksa. Oh, it's not missing it. Okay, and not Bubbles a bad, not beat. a bad punish. Bubbles nice CP the there. Coast gonna set up player. the dungeon. Oh, and gonna get the fat jump in combo. Whoa, whoa, nice tech. Yeah, but this time he went with a two hit dungeon, not the full charge. And let's see if it continues to go that route uh, because mess, mess parries are on point. Yeah. Oh man, this is a really tight match. Ah, <gasps> uh, he was beating oh, that oh, oh, okay. Didn't even matter. I mean, technically he dropped the combo there, but he was able to just get the chip kill, it looks like. There he goes. Takes the victory vape. We didn't see it. <laughs> we got we got the victory vape. We got the Red Bull power up. That's this is it. a really good match, though. I mean, these two characters are just simply degenerate. Let's see. Is Bubbles going to go? Give him more steak, less sizzle. He's going to come straight up like the unfrosted Pop-Tart, just straight to the jam. Is he going to stick with the dungeon? Is he going to keep the charge? The crowd wants him to keep the dungeon. Other, we all other want way. The yeah. Meth 1-0 okay. over Bumbles there here. Bubbles Perfect. makes no adaptation. No. Meth sticking with that super art one on that Makoto choice. Nice. I got to stand right. up and stretch for a moment. Oh, oh sounds good. good. Sounds you're good. good. You're good. I know. This third strike be making me want to stretch. Ugh. Oh, okay, there's here that we go. Dog Into the dungeon. Sets it up. Oh, charge because she's in the air, baby. Yep. That's oh, fun. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah, that close. When he gets that close standing fierce in there, either it's heavy Tatsu or, or the big donkey kick. I mean, that's a big donkey kick. I call yeah. it a burro. Yeah, I, th that's the typical uh, combo that you do follow up with the tension. Oh, my goodness. What? That's a for it into the DP. Fully charged. That was so meaty. Goodness gracious. Hit him on the oh. back oh, end nice of the right there. It's going to be really hard to turn this around. Wake up Universal Overhead. Strong, strong performance by Bubbles. Just. Came back swinging, goodness gracious! Oh, he earned that Red Bull there. Yeah, he earned that Red Bull, and that's that's the thing I see Bubbles doing earlier matches, able to even up, able to close gaps, Honestly, able to chase down. I mean, he's fantastic. After that swig of Red Bull, I think I saw some wings on Bubbles. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh, he earned his wings. He earned his wings. All right, here we go. Nice dash under right there into the Karaksa. 
Oh. Okay. Oh. Nef this one's oh. a weak part. Nice. This is going for the jugular. No, that's stun. Uh, uh, oh, ends up missing the jump in. Actually, that would have been dead, but okay. Yeah, Doesn't quite matter. Was able to still seal the deal. It, it was a pretty one-sided round that time. I mean, and this is just how this th these two characters go. These are characters that get in your face. Oh, you see that parry to the close standing Fierce Tatsu with the corner carry there. Bubble sensing the awareness with Meth on top. Oh, eight nice. point. Good punish right there into the Karakasa. He's not really jumping after those dash punches. Oh, that, that crouching uh, medium kick in the corner has been really problematic for Bubbles. That's been, been fantastic oh. using that. Oh, and this might be, this is, Bubbles thinks it's uh, dead. Yeah. This is dead. GG's. All right. Wow. I mean, what Meth. an impressive comeback there from Bubbles, though. Meth really Rosenstock impressive. able to defend Texas with that performance. Bubbles still in the tournament. Look at that. Chugs the Red Bull. Finishes the bull. I like it because he knows. He knows he's got to earn it in the loser's bracket. They're telling him to stay on. Hey, I know in the chat they've been saying we want more bubbles. I let's want see. more bubbles, you know? Is that it? Let's see. I don't think. I think that's Al G. That is Al G. I'm trying yeah. to see right now. I know their pool's almost all complete. So that I, that is actually the next match it looks like. And so, so this next match will determine who gets out on loser side. And then we get to recap the top eight. Yeah. That's so going to we'll, be a lot of fun. Well, actually, so this is technically the pool that was before the other pool that we were kind of doing commentary on when we first started. Right. So there's quite a few losers matches in the last pool of the day that still need to be completed. Winner's side already done. Merrill was able to make it out. However, on the loser side, we still got probably around six to seven matches, but we are already in. This match with Bubbles versus Algae. Algae is a fantastic Dudley player. And you see here with Houston the, with, the courage, with the courage to wear that old school WrestleMania 8 Bret Hart pick. That's the pink he beat in the Intercontinental Championship from Roddy Roddy Piper with. Again, trying to go air to air with that jumping roundhouse or the jumping parry. I like that approach. Oh, nice. Throws him back. Overhead. Will it? No! He seemed to oh. waited a little too long for that to confirm there. Oh, that's going to be a big buffer. Shouldn't stun, but we'll do a good amount of damage. That Rose is just going to hold him hostage there. Keep that meter high. Keep that stun meter high. And then a pair of fierce punches. All right. Watch Algy, where you're Algy's going. getting hype. <laughs> Algy wants to keep on swinging. Let me at him! Let me at him! That's the energy he's got on the machine there. And then Bubbles is just like, okay. So, okay, here's one thing personally that I like to do as a, as a f former, I'm going to say former tournament player. Why don't you I, say two-time champion? I, I mean, well, I, I've only won Texas Showdown once. Well, you won yeah. it twice uh, in my heart. one zero. Yeah. Um, so, basically, I think taking a break after a really intense set is important. I agree. And, you know, Bubbles and Meth had that really intense set, and I think it would have been better for him to take that break. But, I mean, we'll see. What are you going to do, though, when the TO's in your face? Like, hey, man, we're running out of time. You got to stay on the machine. Oh, you can get you can get two or three minutes. Oh, oh. gets a big dungeon right there. Bubbles. And we saw in the previous match in winner's final against uh, Meth Rosenstock, <laughs> Bubbles was able to turn the tide there and get a quick comeback to even the score. And it looks like that's the case now with those kicks coming out. Ooh, Ooh the burro. Okay. And then connects to oh, the dungeon. Ah, ah. Oh, was a little far off. They still got a green bar, though. Still got all that meter to work with. Corkscrew Strauss, this one connects. Nice punish. Al G not going with the roses there. He's like, nope, we're going. Uh, none of the Batman forever. Just a straight Corkscrew Cross. There we go. Kiss from a rose, which actually was originally from a sequel from Land Before Time before it was in Batman Forever. Oh! Oh, oh and he got enough space to get the stand right now. Bro, Bubbles I, is smiling there as he tied it. I, I, think that was a, I think that was a missed input. I think he meant to do super, super chip, and he accidentally got DP, so... It worked out for Bubbles. It wasn't like Bubbles had to win that round in order to stay alive. But um, you saw the smirk. But, hey, it's nice to get that freebie. And th that could be a little bit of a shake to Algae, you know? C having kind of a crucial error like that. Might, he might start double-guessing double, you know, double guessing himself. Indeed. So Bubbles e turns the tide, evens up the score, as he did previously quickly. Let's see how Algae responds and adapts. Caught him with the sweep. Oh, there he goes with the throw, pushes him back. Now Al G has the corner. If he gets a, he wants to get a cock, he wants to get a knockdown and get the kiss from a rose. Oh, nice little forward there. Yeah, it was a great oh! check on the dash and that was sick. 
That was excellent play from both sides there. LG with the great parry. But Bubbles with the awareness to know what opponents do when they parry those multi-hits. Okay. That's really one thing I want to say about um, Tommy. I really oh. want to say about Third Strike is I feel this is the one Street Fighter game you can never have enough in awareness. Like awareness is huge in this game. There's always so many different situations you can flip over on their head. And it's just a matter of just being able to know that you can do it. Bubbles. Now with the momentum. On match point. Yeah, dodges two of those jabs like he's a heavy speed bag. Gets two hits of the dungeon real close to the stun. Oh, okay, big punish right there. Okay, nice. Algae able to recover some of that. Oh, saw the overhead coming. Stun. One hit stun. Oh, that was so close. Okay. Oh, caught him reaching. Cork caught him across, reaching, but doesn't did barely any damage. damage. Oh my gosh. Okay, oh, he nice parries right there, but gets clipped by the low forward. Algae popped off a little too prematurely after his first round, his first match win. Yeah, he had a valiant event. effort, valiant effort. Bubbles, however, coming from New York, embracing his love. You'll love to see it. You do. Love is in the air. It's and we all love third strike, actually. So we, we love having our significant others in our corners. You know, it's always unless you're always, getting bodied, then it's not so fun. But even then, it's like oh, it's yeah. a little, it's a little reassuring. It's it's a that's a fun, <laughs> quiet drive home. Oh my goodness! Well, bubbles, man. When nice. bubbles turned it on, I mean, he changed momentum in the second fight, and this time he just kept going. And then when he kicks off that round with that stand roundhouse to the face, it's like he sent the message that he just knows where he's moving from. Yep. And then once he connected with the budo, he knew. Even when you missed that reach, it's still, he was digging in, knew where to dash, knew where to check, and knew where to get the job done. Yeah. But here's LG's last stand here. I mean, pairing and blocking with his tournament life and did so much, but just wasn't enough to reach at the level that Bubbles has with this Ryu Mastery. Yeah, I mean, Bubbles, being from New York, has some exceptionally strong players from that region. I mean, you've got Frankie 3S. You've got Daisuke, who is from Japan, but lives, at least last I know, he lives in New York. But even, um, yeah, he, I've seen him, he visits, he's on the New York stream. Yeah, and yeah. I mean, him being a Ryu player as well, even though they play different supers, you can talk about strategy, you can talk about mindset, where do you want to, where do you want to, like, pressure people, bait parries, etc. But, So yeah. we're going back to the previous pool here. Yep. Where ancient, um, Car Carthage, Ca I mean, I think we're missing the R there, so. Is it, is it Carthage? Carthage? Well, I don't Carthage even know. For me. Or, um, Oh, going up against Ham's Arcade, who we saw rocking earlier with the Carmen San Diego Q. Yep. Oh, okay. Boop. Get a, maybe a taunt or two. No, just one. Nice. What I like, too, is um, about Carthage's uh, usage of Yang is a lot of KOF players will notice that uh, this is, uh, it looks like Yori. Mm. And it's, it's funny because they both have Rekkas, they both have command grabs. I can see that. I can see it being like an homage to Iori. You know, the only difference being that Yang does roller skates and Iori's emo. Uh, but good stuff from Ham. Able to make that counter. You know, one thing I did notice, uh, Ancient is one of the few people that is actually not using a stick. He's using a pad. Mm. Very yeah, rare in this game. You have those USBs on those cabinets to make it accessible for... Players of other of other um, controllers. Uh, yeah, and we apologize. <laughs> this is not uh, losers uh, final. This is losers round three. Yeah, this is losers. Yeah, and on the other side yeah. we have Jay Win and Jab still in the bracket as Ooh, well, which we'll big. Do as well. This one could go either way for me. Yeah, I mean, right now it's looking pretty good for Ham's Arcade. Oh, especially after that big jump, fierce. Oh my goodness. I mean, yeah. He's just waiting for that. Just waiting for that one little gap. Hit that button in there. Get that trade at best. Yep. And then you just stand oh, over him. Oh, not the creepiest wind pose ever. Absolutely. I mean, some of those wind poses they have in Tekken, they're weird. <laughs> Fair. Like, I've seen some videos. I'm like, really? You do that every time you beat someone? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder about that. But let's see how um, over on the... Yeah, Ancient Carthage is... It's, um, yeah, it's Ham. Yeah, Ham it's won the first match. Ham's Arcade winning the first match. Oh, Carthage here. Got the corner kick. Got the corner pressure. Yeah. Ham's Arcade up 1-0 against Ancient Carthage. Bringing out the corner pressure. Working brilliantly here. Nice. Good pressure right here. Oh, Carthage Ancient really trying to put on the pressure. 
Yeah, this is the part of Carmen San Diego where we got the loot, the warrant. Maybe the cook. Oh, nice dive kick right there. Good work, Gumshoe. I was actually thinking of that catchphrase for like, oh my I forgot God. it, and it finally came to me. Best time. Okay. Okay. Yang off to an excellent start here with that. Let's see where it's going. Two neutral jumps to the dome, and that's oh. a heavy, that's oh, a nice. heavy. Look at uh -huh. the damage. Just got a three-piece, but I'll tell you, that's a thick one. That. That's extra crispy. Oh, and the oh. Up, and that's dead. Oh, my goodness. All he had to do was just get two moves, confirm off him, take him to town, you know? That's what's going on. Okay, nice. Gets the EX Rekka's there. Oh. Oh, okay, finishes it out. Oh, taking him to town. Got him with that up kick there. Yo, Carthage is oh. on a roll. Oh, man, he's completely turned this around. Oh, he's letting Ham's Arcade know. You got to think more about the Roman Empire. Because I am marching these elephants down the Alps. <laughs> if his name is Carthage. If his name is actually Carthage and not Carthage, I look like a complete okay, idiot. Well, let's see. Hold on. <laughs> we, we can figure this out real quick. Okay, it is Carthage. There has to be an R in his name. Okay, so yeah. that wasn't on me. Yep, ancient Carthage. Carthage. That was, uh, that was one like of. I, said, uh, I don't know anything about history, so I didn't even know what eighth. It, you don't need to. The Roman Empire is overrated, Tommy. You're yeah. good. Oh well, you got to know Latin though, right? Because you're in the medical stuff. Like yeah, you got to know bit. Latin. There yeah. we go. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Carthage back on his revenge tour with the dive kicks here. Oh, Will he nice. catch this Carmen San Diego looking cue? Whips the command grab there. Ooh. That was a good jump back right there. And he got the taunt off. And oh. he got the jump into the dive kick cancel. Oh, oh no, he missed, missed it. it. Oh. But still gets that target combo. Cat scratch oh, fever. Oh, the jump back fierce. Okay, and Ham's Arcade. I love the hit. Point. I love the jump back on that thing, I know. man. It's it just like looks like it hits hard. It's like he's got two power bracers just coming off the top rope. Double sledgehammer. Yep. Like Macho Man used to do outside the ring. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good parry. Oh. All Let's right, see Ham's match right now. Yeah, Ham's got the momentum here, and he's got two supers on deck, which we haven't seen yet. Been able to hit confirm with, but palms over Baghdad. Ancient oh. Carthage. Oh, oh, nice oh woke up with it. Okay, man. Ancient Carthage with his pressure. Oh, oh. mama mia. He kicks the door down. Oh, my oh, gosh. Oh, but he kicks the door down. Oh, my back. gosh. Carthage coming close, and he oh, forces another round. he's not able to red parry the final hit. Oh, hey, what are you standing hey, up, are you standing up for? for? What are you standing up for? What are you standing up for? Let's oh, see no, if that bite him off. in the tush. Oh, no. Early pop-off from the earliest The earliest pop-offs, and the thing is, he actually has to unplug his controller, so... <laughs> <laughs> that was okay. Let's see. He, he's seemingly recomposing. Let's see what happens. Yeah, he's got the momentum this time. Thank the heavens. Okay, nice ex record pressure. Continuing. Yeah, he's trying to chip it out. Oh, oh is it, he's got the damage to do it. Cam has the damage to do the job. Oh, but it's gonna come close and to this. And baits no. it out. And there we go. Now he can stand up and not worry. Okay, he's double checking. He's triple checking. I respect it. He almost cost himself the game potentially. Man, he—he he, if, if we didn't warn him, I mean, he would have been all the way to the other side of the ballroom. Yeah, and then would have been sprinting back. I mean, we've seen some of those awkward moments that have happened not just in bracket, but we've seen it happen in money matches as well. Yep. How embarrassing is all that? Absolutely. But he was still able to catch his gears. Let's see. This was an amazing back and forth matchup. I mean, Ham was bringing some of that big red. Big Clifford, the dog energy. Yep. Because you see that fight in there. Rocking the red with that. Hey, is there a yellow Q outfit, by the way? Uh, I don't think there is. Ah, so there goes all my Curious George references. There we go. Throwing them out the window. <laughs> nice. Gets the command grab right there. Oh, that, misses that the was That was a heartbreaker, here. Tommy. I mean, that would have been a big one. He still ended up winning, but it, it's nice to kind of get those combos and feel confident whenever you're you're doing you're playing, right? Let's see, is this a pop off? Ham almost had it there. Caught the kick, reset, takes the throw. Let's see. Look at this. I think it's Jim. Oh, we did get the pop off. It was right there. after that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
We didn't want to add that to the highlight reel. I respect it. <sighs> Dang. And so there we go. Hey, at least he went out swinging, you know? <laughs> yeah, I respect it. So let's get it over to the other side. We've got Jab or Hugo against Jay Wynn. Yeah, this is tough. He's going with the C in boot, too. So, so that is, this is the one matchup because you can set up. They're not terribly hard to set up. Um, like unblockable situations, right? And so that's actually why you use SA three in this matchup is because you can get good damage, you can get the unblockables. It, it, it's pretty, pretty solid overall. Well, let's get it started there. Only be able to hit him with half of the meter there. Get some of those chips. I love the motion trails though. It's like, whoa. yep. Wow, that was a really dangerous whip there from Jab. Oh, he gets away with it, but that time that's a bigger splat. Jay Wynn's gonna have to be really careful on how close he is. Here we go, setting it up. There we go. And he's got that's, it like a, Oh, wow, he got out of it. That's really impressive he's able to get to the second C Imbu. You don't see young players play that efficiently that often. Yeah. I mean, unless they're gods like Yuki or like... Um, KO, KO is the Yang god, but uh, KO, yeah. he never uses... I don't think he ever uses SA3. He plays far too aggressive to like not have a ton of meter for EX Rekkas. Let's see more say Inbu going coast to coast, taking those overheads. A lot of players defending against these custom combos. They usually just take the overhead because there's no follow up after it. So just Jay Wynn gets a few of those uh, medium level Shaolin kicks. Jab trying to clap his way to close the distance, get a little closer to get that Gigas Breaker. Nice. And is this similar to a. Oh! Wow, what a 720 right there from Jab. Gigas broken. Big, massive damage taking it, but Jab keeps himself in the corner there. How's that? Uh, see if that works out. Jay Wynn wants to build some more of that gauge. Just needs a few more of them pokes. Got it now. But before hey, he can activate, scoop. Jab's like, hell no. You're going to get this hug. We're going to take you for a ride. Yep. <laughs> All right. Jab with a very strong showing this first match. Oh, he wants to get out of pools, you know. He's not, mean, looking, he's not looking at his yeah. homies anymore. Like, So, interestingly enough, they're, the same matchup will be happening on both sides. So, right now, we've got Hugo versus Yang. The next match is actually going to be another Hugo versus Yang. And it could spark a double Hugo or it, like a mirror match, I think the crowd Either wants way. a Hugo mirror. I, I would actually like a Yang mirror, too. But, I mean, it's, I've never seen Hugo versus Yang so much in my life. Yeah. Harry's with the anti. Oh wow! Great read to see that overhead kick was coming after the reset, and then Jab able to get the equalizer there, and he's giving himself an applause there. Yep. Good pat on the back. You know, it's like he uh, directed and produced the film. A little Tommy Wiseau energy. Oh. Okay. Those wreckers. No. Eddie whipped Not it. Oh, time. he was going for the grab. You are tearing me apart, Lisa. <laughs> All right. Ooh, so close. Jay Wynn, though, in a pretty good spot. Doesn't need to overextend. Going to play it safe. I respect it. Uses the Saiyan boo, but nah, Jab is just going to get the trade. I mean, oh, hi, Mock. Yeah. <laughs> Jay Wynn takes it there. Jump Jab. You're going to have the super priority there. It's a pretty safe option. That's what I wanted to ask you, Mr. Two-Step. So it, with the Saiyan boo, um, does every hit of that count as a super? It should. Like like Ganagin does. Okay. It's like same with Ganagin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. And he's only been activating it from full screen away. So it's like the first 40% of the timer there is, is just him trying to approach and close in. Yeah, he's. it's not like Yoon where you can activate. Like, this is ideal, right? Boom. Yeah. But that's very similar to a Rose with Soul Illusion, how you can pair some instant overheads yeah. there when you got that going. It seems like. Yeah, I wanted to also ask. So there's not really, like, optimal ways to confirm into Saiyan Boo. Like, you well, can with the agent. Yeah, kind of like what Jaywin's trying to set up right now, where he does the cross-up into, I think it's like Crouch Strong Sweep or something like that. He, that's kind of what you do against Hugo. Because if you can get that dive kick at the right time and the right angle, then it creates, like, an unblockable situation. But yes. honestly, I can't tell if either Jaywin is maybe not doing it as tight as he could or if Jab is, like, successfully parrying out of it every time. Well, I just want to talk about some shenanigans that we saw. Thank you, by the way, for the insight. It was excellent. Of course. Um, you're doing such a service for the chat, man. You're awesome. But I wanted to point out uh, Jay Wynn um, over on the cabinet there. He kind of crossed his arms there, giving the rise up sign to some of his homies there. So oh, he's kind of got the X. Says. He gave the X. You know, I, think that's I want to say he goes by Weapon X as well or something to that effect. So oh, that could be what it is. That's what it is. We got the well, big wall slam right there. This is looking like a big, a big match or round for Jab. Who's jabbing? 
Well, he's going to reach out there. I mean, he's hoping nice. those records are made of adamantium because now he's back against the ropes there. Yep. Go for it. By the way, that Weapon X comic is awesome. It's like a horror movie. Oh, I really? Yeah. I've never read it. <laughs> oh, read it. It's great. Okay. 80, Frank Miller, I think, wrote it. It's fantastic. Okay, good to know. I think he did. He wrote the solo Wolverine one. That one was also Oof. really good. So Double jab here on right that there. point. Oh. Oh, oh nice. the Rojo. With the 360. Rojo SBD, that's what I call it. He's got maybe one of the last Saiyan boosts. Will it be? Goes with the universal overhead. Look at that. Rekka, 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 Rekka. More nice. Rekka. Oh, and he did jump. I. I mean, Ugh. you gotta know. Wow. He, he's hungry for the 720. He's got it locked and loaded. You just, you gotta respect it. And there he goes. He walks off with his victory vape. Jay Wen with the uh, awkward handshake. Hey, man. I'm sorry I told you to rise up. Rise up. No, I mean, I get the Weapon X reference. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Here he goes. Sets up that unblockable boom. And see, usually right there, that's where the unblockable gets set up. Um, but Jab actually successfully parried out of it every time. Beautiful yeah. 720 right there. I mean, it's really fascinating to see, like, I see the similarities now with uh, Saiyan Buu and um, Rose's Soul Illusion from Street Fighter Alpha 2. And it's like some of the things I would do when I had that activated is I would do, like, instant jumping short. Right. And then just loop that over on different sides. Ah. And then, yeah, then you're able to connect with the uh, Rose's Drill for, like, 50% of their health. Yeah. But what I loved is when he was finally connected with the Saiyan Buu, he just had it more and more and more. And then you could just see Jab at that point just channeled his inner Andre the Giant yep. and just threw him out of the damn ring. Yeah. Like, that was... That was fantastic there. So here you go. Does the same thing. Gets the unblockable setup. And Jab, once again, successfully parries out of it. Yeah, Jab's parries, by the way, were very hype. Especially that red one to the SPD. Yep. That we saw in the closing sets, which I believe is here. Yep, right there. Yeah, I mean, that Beautiful. right there. That was such a momentum. Such a clinching moment here. And in the end, Jay Wynn, with that hell of momentum, we saw him get those conversions. Three sets of Rekkas. Mm. But you can't get... You can't get that close you man. can't and you see that's the that's the tough part i think with that matchup is hugo doesn't mind being that close exactly yang while he is a mix-up character doesn't necessarily do like a ton of damage um so it's it's like you really have to, like hugo can take a big risk like that and it's okay um and just like there it moved on but now on the other side we've got big bad wolf versus ancient carthage rocking and rolling on the same matchup I like how people who are probably new to Third Strike seeing this, and, which is interesting, um, will probably see the repeat of Hugo versus Yang and be like, whoa, these are both two top-tier characters. Right. Maybe Yang's the bigger brother. Ooh, I love nice how we're also all rocking Yang with the Iori look. Oh, that is, I feel like it's a popular color. But Big Bad Wolf having none of that. He's going to huff, he's going to puff, and he's going to SPD your house down. I know. And here we go. He's already got a full level one loaded. Oh, my goodness. Great level punish. one. SA1. Yeah, caught him overextending there. He's like, you can't cross the Alps on me. Oh, man. Tried to go for it again. Hey, shout outs to putting the R back in his name, man. Love you guys. Uh. <laughs> All right. Nice. Oh, uh, we saw more wreckers in the corner. Oh, it's dangerous. Okay. Oh, caught him jumping Ooh. back. That is so risky. And he backs up a little bit because he yeah. saw that Gigas Breaker. He, he, oh, oh uh, this time, my goodness. A big bad wolf is like, I am inevitable. <laughs> get into my loving arms and see that's all it takes. Yang doesn't have much health. You get one of those 720s, that's easy 50, 50%. And big bad wolf one more fight away from getting closer <laughs> to facing jabs. So, you know, you all want that Hugo mirror. Yep. We're bringing it in, but don't. Don't count out ancient Carthage here, recovering from his early pop-off. Yeah. Keep those wreckers coming. I mean, this is kind of the same thing that happened to him last match. He w lost the first one, won the second one, boom, rocking and rolling. Okay, nice. Guys. Oh, this is going to be a big problem here. Oh, out of range. Okay, good pressure. Nice. Gets the guest parry into the 360. Oh, oh that's not quite dead. Problematic. And five fingers. What did they say to the face? Match point. Match point. That's exactly what they said. <laughs> oh, oh, no, oh it was so enough. close, though. 
That was a pixel away, Ancient Cartridge. Coming through, pushing himself out of the corner. Oh, trying to continue with the juggle, though. Okay, oh, this nice. Is great. Stun building up. You don't see Hugo get stunned very often. I don't think we are. Oh. Oh, the backbreaker puts him back in the corner. Oh, my goodness. Oh, what a great parry. This time does get the juggle there. This is a great round for Ancient Carthage here. Isn't oh. it? No. Yo, oh, no. Oh, he's wow. going to regret. He's going to regret not doing the EX. Well, I didn't even. Oh, I, oh man. Uh, if he would have used a little bit of meter, would have lived to see another round. But instead, Big Bad Wolf, he forces the Hugo Mirror with that advancement. There we go. What a monster play here. I believe this next matchup is. Let's look at the brackets. Yes, so it's Jab fun. Jab versus Big Bad Wolf. Okay, the winner goes against Jim Krem. Yep. Who we saw earlier, I believe, who lost to Merrill. No, not to uh, Merrill. Uh, he lost to. Yeah, no, he lost, he lost to Merrill. Oh. You're right. That was the one moment I gaslighted myself. It, it'd be <laughs> like that sometimes. Yeah, the only time really my memory seems to serve consistently is during that card game in Super Mario Brothers 3. <laughs> I can always tell you where the one up and the 20 coins are. I love it. Right here, we're seeing Big Bad Wolf really did pretty well as far as getting some parries into the 360s. Huge damage. And then that was the momentum shift when he saw the four figures say to the face. Yep. And I mean, right Car here. Boop. Carthage and coming pop. back. And then caught him there for the win. Yep. And this was after Carthage was connecting with the Rekka that was getting really close to the kill, but used the normal Rekka instead of the EX one and just gave Big Bad Wolf that magic pixel. Now, I know it wouldn't have decided it. Would have been the round. We're even even. Start off Hugan Mirrors because it would have been another round for Ancient Cartridge to play. Yeah. But still, that was to drop a kill and then have that happen. Uh, it's oh, nice. Hard. Empty jump into the 360. Oh, oh throws into the 360. him right back. I love seeing this. Hey, um, you watch a little bit of All Elite Wrestling. I'm more of a WWE guy, but you know you, you know what chant we got to get going here, right? Uh, what chant? Well, he hasn't hit it yet, but you'll see. Uh, Gets him there. What? Me! 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 <laughs> Come on, chat. You know you're with it. Oh, my goodness. This is the match. This is the two biggest dudes out there. Yeah, jab with the big 720 right there. I just noticed they actually picked two different supers. Yeah, I mean, he's been going with the Super Art 3, so he's holding up against that. Oh, I want to see some beef and spice, damn it. Oh, my goodness. Not the beef and spice. Oh, my goodness. All right, Big Bad Wolf now. I can't say who I was impersonating there, but... <laughs> Here we oh, go. Oh, big clap energy there. That's a super hard. He's throwing more than bows. Oh, oh Perry, the big one. Just <laughs> adding insult to injury. Like, you didn't have to You didn't have to super do the 360 like that. That's uh, all I'm, I'm going to say. I mean, it's just looking like the shades of young Yokozuna when he could do, like, the rock bottom on people. I like it. Uh, the, the, uh, back in the early 90s, man, RIP, one of the goats. Let's see how Jab's going to respond to that. Oh. Oh yeah, you can tell. I, I saw a jab. He tried to get that uh, that that 360 off. Big bad wolf in the pink, jab in the blue. Oh, oh, that could have been a big punish. Oh, nice punish. Both full meters they, here. Those empty jump 360s are doing work. Whoa, oh my we gosh, don't see the that too much. Down four the rounds. Dolphin. The straight up dolphin with the headbutt, shades of Bam Bam Bigelow, oh taking the gosh. first round there. Woo! <laughs> Big Bad Wolf is coming closer. He's like looking at Jim Crum, like your Akuma is mine. I know. I did they? I, did Jim Crum play any, either of these two? He did. So he actually he won two zero versus Big Bad Wolf. So if Big Bad Wolf wins this, it'll actually be a rematch. Uh, the double know, jeopardy love, is always very hard. We oh. love runbacks. Yeah. Double and to be double jeopardy, that's like that sense you're gonna have a long flight home basically. Yeah. So Jab making an adjustment here. He doesn't want to play the mirror anymore. He wants to get a little heavy hitting. Wants to throw some of the hands out there. All Not right. many people love mirror matches, so it kind of makes sense, but I don't know. I guess we'll see how he does. Yeah, as a player, I think they're a war crime. I think they should not happen. They they they're terrible. I just hate losing to another Chun Lee. Nice confirm right there. Ooh. Scoop. Caught him there. Nope. Okay. Oh. Jab, jab. He's going to stay strong. Oh. All right. Big Bad Wolf on set point. <laughs> set point there. Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> 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 
Stan Kicks, oh. good use of the buttons there. Now, this is an interesting thing because normally Dudley wins in matchups when he gets the trades, but you don't really want to trade against this guy. And Big Bad Wolf with that Super Art 3 on deck, you know what he can do. True. He might be able to punish that with Super. Oh, my oh. goodness, what a scoop. Yeah, splats him right there. Oh, Empty okay. jump, caught him with the corkscrew cross. And then he's oh, like, nope. nice, gets the super priority there. Big Bad Wolf. Oh, oh okay. Corkscrew cross again. Another wake up super. They are, this is a slobber knocker straight up. Oh, Chad throwing his hands up in the air a bit. Well, bring out some of JR's barbecue. Oh, no. Big drop kick energy off the ropes for the big man who gets his run back against Jim Crump. He does. Not only does he defeat the other Hugo. He made him switch characters, and then he paid the price. There you go. You see, Super Art 3 gets blocked, goes into the Gigas Breaker. Me! 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 <laughs> <laughs> but then Big Bad Wolf here countering with, got the Super Art 3, and then just give them the beef and spice. Yep. And he snaps him like a spiced meat stick. So, <laughs> really good work by Big Bad Wolf overall. Just dominated in the uh in <laughs> that anti-air was actually kind of crazy though? but he did really well in the in the mirror and then ends up handling the dudley pretty well good confirm right there obviously confirming off the hit on the jump gets the low short into the super um so and especially here connecting with that corkscrew cross there that was brilliant and then when he had the uh, the empty jump into it yeah which Oof. was which i thought was fantastic as well and kept jab around but then that that drop kick there just decides it, and it's really Hugo's jumping arc that, yep. that creates like a whole world of deception. I mean, he's here. a big boy, you know. He's a big boy, so his jump is a little tricky, a little tricky to deal with. Um, but here we go. We got the final match of tonight. We've got Big Bad Wolf representing Minnesota versus Gib Crumb repping Houston, hometown hero here. So Hugo here gonna bring him the fury of the Twin Cities. And Jim Cram here, he's gonna have to bring the full demon there. This is not that casually Masatsu child energy. As he just avoids the meat squatcher, goes for a pair of hurricanes and gets on the back end of the cross up there. But he's, like we saw earlier that he did previously in the matchup against Jab, uh, Jim Cram was able to take to the skies and just negate some of that um, command grabbing. Yep. Ooh, that reset, I mean, what? look at this right now. Jim Cram playing this so well. So once again, just slippery and annoying. And I, that's how you have to play. Like, some people might think, oh, you play annoying, it's like an insult. But honestly, it's it's a bit of a compliment because that means you're frustrating. Yep. And right now, not quite going to kill, but could set up a chip scenario. A little bit risky, though. Yeah, and I want to say that. That's one staple of, like, coming up in the FGC. You start to realize that people saying, like, negative things are actually compliments. Like, words like spam means a good Oh, thing. my gosh. But, oh, no beat. Oh. No beat. Gets clipped by the low forward. Big Bad Wolf. Oh, Jim Grab. Big Bad Wolf tried to grab it. Uh, tried, oh, he goes straight to the super. What? So that's something that occasionally Akuma players will do because if you jump forward at the very beginning, the it hot, can catch. The hitbox catches. Yeah. Because so. yeah. it does have a high angle. High arc, rather. Oh, nice. What a parry. And then into the Crouching Fierce onto the other side. I bet he wanted that to be a DP. That would have looked so stylish. But, hey, we'll take it. Yep. We'll take it. Big Bad Wolf nearing a full meter. So he's got two hammers on deck. And when I think of two hammers, I think of, like, that stage in Mario 3 where the you got the two turtles there. Like, doo -doo 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 -doo. Love it. <laughs> I have some friends who suck at those levels and some friends who are prodigies. You never know. But what you do know yeah. oh, is nice that area. command grab really sets the tone here oh. in the first match. And look at the reach he gets on that neutral jump fierce there. So we're seeing that adjustment now from Big Bad Wolf, right? He's realizing, let me just get in the air more and use some of my really big normals to clip you out of the air. And, I mean, he hits hard still, even in the air. Yeah, I mean, he just installed himself his own James Webb's telescope, sets it up in space, and now he can see everything, you know? It's kind of like in the beginning, it was the start of the Hubble. They launched it, but the lens was blurry, so you couldn't uh -huh. take any pictures of space. Yep. Nope, no problem, Big Bad Wolf. Look how he trades a fireball with that slap. You know, that's what an experienced Hugo player knows, and you win that trade all the time. So now Jim Crumb's got to reconsider his poking approach. Oh. Again, fireballs after trade with the fireballs. That's all in Big Bad Wolf's favor. Nice. Okay, really. Both both sides playing very patient. I mean, you kind of have to. 
Yeah, but okay. you know, I mean, it, both players very explosive here, especially if Jim Kim can get the full, oh. the full deck there. Fakes him out with a dive kick, whiffs it, and then catches it with the anti over. That's a tricky maneuver, man. Yeah. Oh, oh. no, can't teleport out of that. Oh, that meat for days to KKC. Nobody home. Oh, my goodness. We've seen two kind of desperation KKZs, and I, neither of them have panned out. Well, so. in the last stream, we saw four. I saw two of them as well. Yeah. I can't believe I had four KKZs. In a, we had more KKZs than Masatsus. Yeah. I mean, like. For sure. I think that move's overrated. <laughs> it's good in Street Fighter V. <laughs> it's actually great in Street Fighter V. Like, because there's, like, no chip damage. It's one hit. Right. Yeah, yep, so that's you, true. You're able to get a lot of kills on the table with that. So it looks like Big Bad Wolf is switching from uh, Roxy to Poison. <laughs> or maybe there was Poison the whole time, but I, I noticed all I the other Hugos had Roxy. I, I think it's always Poison. Yeah, I don't know. the default is Poison. But oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, gets a little reset action there. Can we just not have Poison wear orange hair? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Short, short, super. Oh, and he gets a big taunt. Whoa. Oh, he whipped the lariat. Interesting. I like that. I like it, too. It was stylish. Oh. oh. With the backbreaker right now and Big Bad Wolf now on set point. Oh. Sky's protected. Now. Ripping him out there. Got that air defense system. Let's see what more firepower Gibrum's going to bring. Oof, nice sweep. Okay, gets a little demon flip into the throw action. Big Bad Wolf here on match point. I mean, Big Bad Wolf has made some really good adjustments, and so it's kind of on Give Crumb now, but Give Crumb kind of looks a little shook. Yeah, cornered, even though he hit that parry, doesn't do much for him. Good anti air streak and buy himself a little bit of space there. But Big Bad Wolf, oh, he catches him out. No Super wow. 3 this time. Interesting. But, yeah, Teleport was able to get away. Jim Crumb buys himself a little bit of a combo from Tatsu and DP. Oh, oh, big gosh, jump. Oh, gosh, that huge normal. It's not looking good. Big Bad Wolf walking forward. Not going to chip. Enough to chip. Really close. Reset oh, demon flip, and he jumps Beautiful back. reactions. Ends up reacting with the jump uh, Jump short, it looked like. So, uh, strong work. Big Bad Wolf punching his ticket in to loser's top eight tomorrow. He Get a little bit of replay away, action. Man. So this should be a pretty spicy top eight. Let me uh, pull up the bracket while we got the replays going. Oh, just brilliant. I mean, I feel like Big Bad Wolf was able to make a lot of adjustments. As you mentioned earlier, Jim Krem did win previously. But it just looks like he adapted with those air-to-airs. Absolutely. That neutral jump fierce, just controlling the space, and he did it. So in other words, Big Bad Wolf, in order to overcome this, had to take the approach to the land, air, and sea to dominate it all. And it avoids oh. the KKZ, and he's just going to go, I'm going to surf and turf you. Why? Because I'm going to turf you, and then you drown in pools. <laughs> surf oh and turf, gosh. baby. Good stuff right there. Oh, and he caught him just out there, you know. It was like he was reaching with that lariat out there, like trying to put his YouTube channel at $6 a month, and we're like, no. You I know mean, about that. Really <laughs> strong work. Oh. Big Bad Wolf really made some great adjustments from the first set to the second set. Played a lot more patient, in my opinion. Yes. Which worked out really well. Could really afford to kind of get hit by all this. Um, and, and he was looking yeah. to trade. That's the other thing I like, too, is we saw earlier, like, for instance, he came close to the fireballs and was right. able to slap him yep. while getting hit with the fireballs. And to a Hugo player, that put that, that makes me a happy – that makes them a happy Hugo 100% of the time, 100 times. So that was fantastic. I mean, Big Bad Wolf really showed his adaptations yep. and was really able to be – I mean, is he the last Hugo standing? We'll find out as we recap this top eight. Yeah, so right now for tomorrow, we've got top eight tomorrow. It should be at 2 p.m. CST, so just keep that on your calendar. We've got Chosen out of Dallas, a Dallas Yoon player, versus Meryl Plays Rough, who played today. She plays Makoto. Then we got Wax uh, versus, who's a Dallas Yoon as well, versus Beth Rosensock, Dallas Makoto. Uh, on the other side of winners, losers, we've got, Big Oh, there we go. It's right in front of us now. Yep. Then we got Big Nasty versus Big Bad Wolf. So that's going to be a Hugo Mirror right there. We could never get enough of them. I know. And then we've got Dictator, who is a Houston Makoto player, versus Bubbles, New York. 
I, he might be the only out of state, or, or okay, no, him and Big Bad Wolf, they're the only out of state players here this weekend. But really exciting stuff. It's going to be a great tournament tomorrow, so please make sure that you tune in. I believe it's streaming on this channel tomorrow. On this channel, should be yep. on this channel tomorrow, 2 p.m. Central Time, as you mentioned. And yeah, so let's look at the character breakdown again. Um, we've got Yun, Makoto, Yun, uh, Makoto, 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 Hugo, Hugo. Makoto, Ryu. Well, it's a lot of Makoto. All I know is I don't see any Chun, so I'm just I'm was, just inclined to believe that, that Yun is too? really broken. Last no, year. we had we had a couple Chuns oh, we had a last couple. year. There was one. <laughs> um, was it two years ago? Uh, when I believe there was a Texas showdown that didn't have Chun Li in top eight. I'm trying to remember which one. It no, was. all the most recent ones have had Chun in top. Eight. Oh yeah, you played Chun Li and you won. Yeah, that, so. yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I've been in top eight the, the past few years. Not this yeah, year. Yeah. I'm not playing, but. You just such a strong character. I, I think we really need to reevaluate that character, probably nerf him out of existence. Just kidding. That that obviously would never happen. <laughs> we play a game that is never gonna change, and I like it because of that. So I mean it's just great seeing Ryu because I remember like sometimes in third strike conversations, some people would put Ryu at like the lowest possible tier. Right. But seeing how he was able to get that damage and put out there and when he was just a few donkey kicks away from changing uh -huh. it. Um I really like bubbles and like exactly the way he brings that New York style of Ryu. It's fantastic. We've seen him play excellently on the East Coast and also he learned from the best. He learned from Dice Gay. Indeed. Which really shows like some of his examples and what Dice Gay has said about bubbles is how um he knows how to go for optimal options all the time, which you really need to do to make Ryu be that formidable. Right. But we got a lot of Makoto going on there. Yeah, so we do. Expect to see a lot of Kara, 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 Kara Kusa action coming your way. For real. And it's just going to be a lot of that, a lot of choke slamming from hell. But like we said, we got two Hugos left as well. So you're going to start things off with a Hugo mirror in the loser's bracket. I'm expecting to see a lot more meat chance come along that way. So yep. 2 p.m. tomorrow. Don't go nowhere. It's going to come directly after the top eight of Super Turbo. So that is going to be awesome. Yeah. Hey, right here in Houston, man, we're coming. So get you guys with more stuff with Texas Showdown action. I'm the one and only Team Chris alongside the third strike god, Tommy Two-Step. We will and see you all tomorrow. See you all tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, thank you. Oh, dude. Yeah. Yeah.